All right. Have uh, you ever heard the song of Summer Twitch. in Ohio? I've moved some audio stuff around. Let's see if the people out in the world can actually hear us. Or... Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello world. If I can continue so to embarrass meetings. myself with my lack of technical oh, skills. I'm seeing some woos and some yays and some got Yay. it. Yay. Oh. Hey. Okay. <laughs> hey. Can everyone hear us hey. now? Uh, it oh, seems wow, to be. really, really close. Sorry. All right. Awesome. I'm glad that we use 30 minutes for more technical hoo-ha and shenanigans, not <laughs> counting the 30 minutes before that. That was actually a technical setup. We tried. <laughs> so, um, Take a let's screenshot just totally change how we're going to do everything. Totally. <laughs> Improvisation is what we gamers do. So let's just roll with it and hope for the best. So, um, the quick skinny from last session. Our band of intrepid investigators-to-be went to a rent party, hoping to just sort of cut the rug, maybe have a little bit of tea, and got dragged into a mythos mystery. They were asked very nicely by a couple in love if they could help legally free her brother from being pinched by the police. And that led them upstairs to an unusual encounter with a hellfighter, as her brother and his friend were both hellfighters also. And from that encounter, they deduced there's some interesting creature that's hunting them and they encountered undead in the middle of the street that vanished without any trace or sound and they discovered that in fact Killian is a friendly grocer with a, a knack for killing people and that Archibald doesn't seem to fall to his death when thrown out of a window. Cora has a unique talent for acquiring tea for those that need it. Leora seems to be a, a skilled practitioner of the healing arts and is not afraid to view a desiccated husk without a brain and Amoya seems to run a funeral home where the dead don't stay that way and with all that in mind let's just jump right into it um Jen would you mind telling a little bit about yourself and your character sure hi I am Jen Kretschmer um I am on Twitter as Dreamwisp on Twitch as Dreamwisp Jen I am a writer producer actor a uh, streamer and a uh, disability advocate. Um, I am very, very thrilled to be here today again and back with all these wonderful people. Um, I am playing uh, Leora Lily Kaplan, who is an ex-spy, now nurse, working in Harlem, um, who is, uh, you know, trying to, to get by like everyone else and um, is uh, has, has connected with this group and is, is a bit shocked to be running into creatures like this uh, floating around. <laughs> it's not the everyday. Ariel, could you tell us a little bit about your character, yourself and your character? Hi, I'm Ariel Celeste. Um, I'm a, a writer. I worked, I very proudly worked on the second edition of Harlem Unbound. Uh, I uh, am with uh, Contessa, um, trying to advocate and make space for um, queer folk and trans folk and people of color at cons uh, so they can participate in games and run games without having to deal with other people's bullshit. Um, uh, I play Amoya Clark, who, um, well, there's something not right about her. Lots of very strange things has happened, and she seems to be the only one who... Uh, isn't phased by them. Um, she unflinchingly presented her four zombie servants to the party when they all came to her place. Um, and she might actually have a plan for what to do next. Uh, so um, yeah, there are definitely some strange secrets going on with her. And Matt, can you tell us about yourself and your character? Yes. Hi, I'm Matthew Mercer. I'm the GM, DM for Critical Role, as well as a voice actor. And I am playing Killian Byrne, who's a, an older Irish immigrant who has a bit of a checkered past um, doing bloody work for various criminal interests, who has attempted to reform his life in his later years and uh, seems to have been caught up in a lot of stuff he doesn't quite understand, but the instinct is still there to survive. And Misha, could you tell about yourself and your character? Sure. Uh, I'm Misha B. Uh, I'm a writer, game designer, editor, sensitivity editor, uh, occasional streamer. Um, uh, I've worked on Arun. Uh, I am one of the uh, founding 
uh, curators for new, more seats at the table, which is a bi-weekly newsletter devoted to uh, games by gender marginalized individuals. Uh, you can sign up for that somewhere. Uh, and uh, one of the founders of New Agenda Publishing, which is dedicated to getting games uh, by underrepresented voices out into the real world. Uh, I am playing Coretta, Cora Smith. Uh, she's a con woman from, from Georgia who's made her way to the big city and uh, is a little freaked out by all of this going on, especially, you know, people falling out of windows and flying and dead people walking up to her when you walk into a... a, a, a into a, a funeral home, you know. It's, I'm not sure if, I, if if what's going on here. I'm just gonna roll with it. They got plenty of tea. It'll be fine. We'll be okay. All right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Quinn, can you tell us about yourself and your character? I want to guess the mute button. Um, so uh, I'm Quinn Murphy, and uh, I am. Uh, uh, freelance uh, RPG um, designer. I've uh, been doing it for, geez, like 10 years now uh, with, with a couple breaks in between. Um, I uh, uh, Most recently, I've been doing a lot of uh, work for sort of uh, uh, Paizo um, in uh, various things. And I'm also um, did a sort of hip hop RPG called Five Fires um, that I've uh, after some sort of years off, like uh, playtesting uh, and uh, doing some stuff with that again. Uh, I am playing Archibald Warwick. I, is, uh, I am a, a black man who's have uh, gotten dis like a, a lot of privilege and stuff that like most people, most black men in my age would never have had have gotten to travel the world, you know, um, get like great education, all of these things. Um, you know, and, and I'm in Harlem right now. I've, I've gotten just got my first like book of poetry published. You know, not everybody gets it. That's, that's OK. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely having uh, I'm in a, a sort of crossroads in my artistic career. And I've come to Harlem for inspiration and to be um, challenged. And um, I've never really had a place for these abilities that I've had before. Um, and uh, all of a sudden I'm finding inspiration and I'm also, because I found a place for this uh, part of me uh, uh, my, with my sort of telekinetic powers um, and they have strangely found a home. Um, <laughs> even though that home might cause me to go insane and get devoured. Um, and so, I, I, you know, Archibald's kind of in his groove now. So we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll see that. All right, let me say first off, thank you everyone. We've hit our first goal of $500. That's incredible. Uh, and so that's going to give all these great players additional 2D4 sanity right back right now. And it means I get to add in some extra horror that they probably weren't expecting. So we've actually great. got goals that go up to around 2,500. If we could hit that, I get to break out a great old one. And I really, really want to break out a great old one. All right. Um, we'll start off. So everyone, let me go ahead and roll your massive 2d4 sanity gain back that you've gathered. Everyone gets back three points of sanity. Excellent. And don't forget, players, you have some binnies from the last game that you should keep close at hand because you're probably going to need them. Now, having said all that, as a group of you exit the police station out into the bitter cold of December 21st, a light snow started up. You know that both Javier and Smithson are inside, and they can't leave unless you find a way to save them. And as you left, the police were tapping on the jail cell bars, getting ready to possibly beat them again. You've got a handful of clues, and you've got Bex's box, whatever it is. What are you doing? Um, I think we were trying to go to the armory, correct? To, to find someone to help out uh, the gentlemen who were uh, in the prison? Yeah, if I remember correctly, the uh, their captain was at the armory. So to give you a, a quick recap, since we had such a late start, you know that they said maybe someone at the armory could get a lawyer for them if you want to try that route. They mentioned their former, one of their former commanders was a Samuel J. Wright. They're not sure he works. But the armory may know. They gave you the address to a fellow, another Hellfighter, uh, Sergeant Moore, who owns an auto shop that's in um, probably closer 
to the nor- northern region of Harlem. And they mentioned that Moore's kid might play an instrument when you mentioned some kind of music that was playing the other night. And you know from Celestina and Ralph that Bex, whose apartment you went to and had the encounter, was supposed to have gone and met with an Arnold Ford at the UNNI building the day before yesterday. So where would you like to go? You've got Cora's wheels, you've got a mission, and I think two bottles of tea left. <laughs> Steam. That's the important part. Well, two bottles is here. <laughs> yeah. uh, I say the armory. We still are, are uh, I, I think I'll agree with that. Yeah. We are sure. under. It seems like there those those gentlemen are in danger, and we need to get help as quickly as we can. Yeah. So, to the armory, is that what you said? Yep. The group of you load up in the chorus car, and you quickly make your way across town to the armory. Uh, and yep. even as you sort of get there, you notice the building is still somewhat under construction, but the construction looks like it's stopped as you are in the dead of winter. And that's the armory right there on your map, for those of you that need to see it. And even as you sort of make your way up to the door itself, you see there's one soldier standing outside in the cold. He has like a massive coat on and had a sidearm, but just sort of like gives you a general nod as you approach. Um, afternoon, folks. It's a, it's a little little warm to be out today, isn't it? <laughs> you can say that. Uh, we're, uh, Javier and James sent us. We're hoping we could uh, get them a little help. Ah, um, Javier and James. I'm um, sorry, ma'am. There's a, there are a lot of soldiers that that are here. If you want, we could let take you in and let you see. Um, Lieutenant Lance, maybe he could help. That would be excellent. And you see, the soldier sort of smiles. He gets to go into the armory, and the armory is about ten degrees warmer than it is outside. So not much better. Hey, every little bit counts. And Very nice. <laughs> leads you upstairs. And in the office, you see there's a young man probably in his early 20s, maybe 22, if you squint really hard. Clean, shaven, young, spry and preppy. He sort of like jumps up out of the desk, walks over, um, gives everyone sort of like a head nod, shakes your hand, Archibald, offers to shake everyone's hand and goes, ah, I can help all of you today. You're the lieutenant. Yes, ma'am. Hand picked. I, di- I didn't fight in the war, mind you, but I'm, I'm the lieutenant back here, and while they were deployed, I sort of helped keep the records and everything straight. I see. Uh, could I interest you people in some, some coffee? We got uh, a fresh pot. I'll, I'll go ahead. And I'll take a cup if you got one. Thank you. He pours a cup for anyone that wants it. It is lukewarm at best. Plops down in his seat, sort of puts a hand out to like, please have a seat. How can I help you folks today? Well, uh, last night, uh, Javier and James got taken into the precinct, uh, the the 32nd. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Are you saying that we have a couple soldiers that were arrested? Well... I'm saying they were taken in by the police, but the police, when you go there, say they don't have them. Oh. I'm, I'm sure it's probably just some sort of clerical error, something we could easily get fixed. Uh, if you tell me the police station, I can try to go down or have someone go down there in a, in a day or two to, like, write that issue. See, the problem is a day or two, they'll probably be dead because the cops are kind of beating on them as we speak. And you see, Here like, there's a record of uh, by their hand of what has been happening, and I take out the what they wrote on the piece of paper, okay, and give it to him. You, you see, the projector facade sort of like falls away from his face, and even without talking, he sort of like gets up and he walks out of the office and he's shouting out some orders to some of the other soldiers. It looks like they're trying to find a lawyer to go down there now. 
uh, as you wait, maybe he comes back in about 15, 20 minutes. Very, very abrupt. Um, I, thank you for thank you for letting me know. I'll make sure we take care of this. But will you, will you they were they were in Phoenix Squad, and that makes me really concerned. If you wouldn't mind, could you go check on Sergeant Moore then and Captain Wright? Since you're since you've already done these fellows a solid, I see no reason why you wouldn't want to help the whole squad. Do you know where they are? And he gives you Bex's address. He gives you the hospital where. He says that right works, and he gives you Moore's address to the auto shop. So, <clears throat> excuse me, do, do, which, did I know the any of them by those names? You recognize Moore's last name, because Bex always talked about him. While okay. Bex was sort of the, uh, Moore had sort of a, me a mechanical bent to him. That's why he owned sort of like his own auto shop, and he and Bex would sort of discuss different parts. Bex was more school learned and knew a lot more electronics, and Moore was more hands-on. Okay. And then did I know the gentleman at the hospital? No. They've only mentioned him in passing. They say that right since he was an officer, he never really wanted to mingle that much with the enlisted to help keep the idea that there was sort of um, a differentiation between officer and enlisted. Um, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but... Uh, you mean more bad news? Yes, more, more bad news. Uh, Mr. Williams is deceased. What? Um, uh. Uh, I get a call if any of the, the soldiers are reported at all. If they go to the morgue or anywhere, they call me and let me know, and I update our records. Are you sure? As of last night, yes. Um, did, did you report him? Were you, were you there? Do you know what happened? And he just rattles on for about two or three minutes with a litany of questions. I, I look at him, Moya. <laughs> Um, there, we went to visit him at his apartment. Um, Miss uh, Kaplan was going to introduce us. Um, and when we got there, sadly, he was already deceased. Um, and apparently there had been some kind of, uh, ruckus beforehand. Um, uh, because before we, we, we could call someone, uh, we heard the sirens. Uh, so, uh, uh, someone has him and, uh, I have tried to request him to be sent to my funeral home. Um, uh, I own, I own the Clark funeral home, ah, uh, okay. but they, but the, that, um, I have not gotten a response to that request. Um, cause I, I, uh, we, we take great pride in taking care of of hellfighters uh, when they pass. Um, and, and you see, uh, he, he leans out he the door. He didn't seem to have any family or anything. So, uh, but I, uh, but I don't have any information about who collected him or where they took him. He leans out the door and shouts out something else. So some of the other soldiers and you, within a minute or so, you see like a car leaving and you can assume it's going to Williams's apartment. Um, and he just sort of plops down in his desk, grief stricken. Uh, is there is there any other news that you would like to share with me at this point? <laughs> Did we tell you about the undead army on the street? Do you really the say that? The creature that was flying. <laughs> Do the two of you really say that? <laughs> actually, yeah, she actually does say that. <laughs> at this point, it's like. I probably wouldn't, <laughs> depending how that goes. <laughs> Incrementally, <laughs> see how it and plays out. You see that she says oh, that. Oh, Miss Coretta, just... you're so funny. She just she gets uncomfortable and she tries to lighten the mood and Look, so silly. Like An undead like army on the street. On the street last night. I, I understand. Yes, there was that shootout. It was very unnerving. Thank goodness the soldiers were there. I understand joking in a time of distress to try to keep yourself calm. That's that's what I read in all the books. But I don't think now is a time for that with their lives in danger and having already lost one of them. Yes, but you are a soldier, sir. sir and surely you can appreciate how jarring and unnerving it would be for a civilian to come across a deceased person lying in their 
own apartment. So you'll Moya, have to you'll have to forgive us. Please make me a fast talk or persuade roll. Okay. You see that Lance is either on the point of snapping or yelling. It's like he can't figure out which way to go. He has so many emotions right now. Uh, fighting skills, language skills. Persuade. Did that work? That did. Did you make it? That's a failure. No. 40 versus 5. Do you want to spend any of your previous bennies that you had oh, before, yeah. or like again. on a reroll? Yeah, we have a mountain of them, right? You, you got a few. Can uh, can can, can uh, our twelve like aid in that at all? Like to just sort of like supplement, sort of. You you can. How do you want to do that? Um. I want to sort of like, um, I feel like I have like some sort of like, like I just like supplement, I'll just kind of like just interject kind of like I have some like, kind of like little short sort of poem of a grief, right? And like prob probably at this point, I probably have one that's like tinged with like kind of some crazy mythos thing too. So that's like strangely apropos. You know what I'm about to say, right? Like, oh, what? Let's hear it. Oh, God. <laughs> why, why, why are you doing I this warned you that I was gonna <laughs> put you on the spot with you. Oh man, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't ready to improvise one, but I mean, uh, uh, I mean, I guess I would just, um, you know, uh, kind of come up with like a quip of sort of, you know, uh, uh, when um, sometimes when death. Um, is most close is like when uh, you most when you most feel like laughing almost right like like I think I think that's like kind of what the line would like one of the, the poignant line would be right um, is that sort of uh, death causes these strange emotions. Awesome. That, he he sort of nods and says, "I I, I understand." All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll I'll start taking care of all this. I have so much work to do now. I I'm unfortunately. Don't have time to talk to you anymore. Um, I'm sorry. Before before you go, you mentioned Phoenix Squadron. Why is specifically are they reporting to you about that group? Can you tell us anything about that group? Um, I just think well, as Bex was coming in here quite frequently over the past few months or so, researching something. I'm not sure what he went into our archives, but says he couldn't find it. So he went started going to the crisis. But since I'd seen him so often. And then you mentioned both Javier and Smithson. They're all part of Bex's squad. It sort of only makes sense that it would be something related to them specifically. They fought in Is France with a else? lot of the other Hellfighters. They were, they should have got awards from stateside they didn't get. I've tried, I fought the bureaucracy, but it didn't make any difference. You're a good man. So, no, I, I don't, I don't know of anything else. I'm sorry, the Hellfighters? Ah, uh, the um, the three sixty ninth. They were uh, the the unit that went out. I'm I'm sure if if you were friendly with Javier and Smithson, you understand their war service and everything else, right? I I I, I would love to tell you about it. That's what I I like she like doing, but I don't have time now. I've got all more pressing matters. Well, thank you for your time, Lieutenant. You are a, a credit to the uniform for sure. We appreciate your service and your assistance. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, sirs. Take care. And you hear him like starting to work even as you like as the door sort of closes behind you about trying to find some way to get them out. Now, um, as Killian is not much of a people person, especially when surrounded by much more people, people uh, than he is. <laughs> uh, since leaving the station, he's still kind of caught in his mind about the fact that there was some sort of a vehicle, this, this, um, this van of some kind that seemed to be aiding this terrifying nightmare creature. Um, so he's just keeping a close eye, street level, wherever they go for any sign of a similar vehicle. Okay. Do you mention this to your comrades at all? Uh, I would, I would be like, you know, I'm, I'm, don't worry, I'm, I'm keeping an eye about just in case uh, anything familiar as to the strange parts of the night before seemed to catch my attention 
with that in mind, Killian, can you make me a hard intelligence roll? And Cora, can you make me just a standard intelligence roll? The the rest of you say Van. Got it. <laughs> I will <laughs> use a Benny to reroll that. <laughs> Feel free. Oh. Can I use Cora. A Go. What'd you get? Another Benny. Do it. Oh. Oh my god, you're, you're, you're getting like closer, closer. Get, I know, it just feels like you've got, go for it. This is you've got some more rerolls if you want to burn through them. Ah! There you go. See? I did it. I did it. All right. So, Killian, as you and Cora are sort of riffing back and forth about vans like that, it occurs to you that you're, a lot of time you've gone, used to go to PJ and Clark's. A van of that size with that make could support a lot of alcohol, is what it's normally actually used for. So, you're not. 100% sure, but you would assume that one of the larger clubs in town would have a van like that so they could just transport alcohol. It is definitely what it's used for. Even more so now since it's illegal, but since it's, since it's such a covered van and it's unmarked, you know it's being used for something illicit. Gotcha. Uh, as, as that moment strikes me, I kind of spin over towards Coretta and go, uh, Miss Coretta, um, don't mean to to bother, but yeah, that that vehicle that hated that strange beast we saw the other night seemed to be making its way, uh, at least usually in business of <clears throat> tea moving. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, it's not the right size for a tea delivery vehicle. Uh, what what place is it? Tea, so uh, uh, right places. Do, do you have any ideas on what possibly a place might be that would be making use of such a vehicle often? There's a few I can probably think of. None that I actually work for. I usually keep my quantities smaller. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, uh, I'll just keep being that van watcher then. So, Cora, with that in mind, just from like the make of the van, you think you could probably narrow it down to maybe 10 or 15 clubs in town. But you need more to actually be able to pinpoint specifically where it would be. Yeah. And you also um, know that it wouldn't be just sitting out in the middle of the day, so you definitely wouldn't see it just by driving by. Yeah, it'd be in a garage somewhere. Um, are there... Which town... The back up. Which club is the closest to where Bex lived? You automatically come up with like 10 or 15 clubs. The yeah. thing is that clubs pop up so much, there could be dozens upon dozens of clubs per night, and those clubs would be different every other night of the week. Gotcha. Okay. So you're all outside of the armory in Cora's car. The, the two of them are, are discussing the illegal transport and smuggling of tea that could easily get any of you arrested if you had it on your persons. Which, in fact, you do. That's true. Actually, in my possessions. <laughs> Where would you all like to go? I, I just want to know that Archibald, like, just having, like, kind of, like, having a sheltered life has sort of like just learned what he was uh, on last session so he's like listening to all this stuff rap like he he wants to know like he's going to become a student he's going to become a student in the game um so so we're, we're, we're there i'm just i'm just listening all right sorry one one second everyone um thank you everyone again for donations we've blown past a thousand dollars now which unlocked oh, wow. uh i think two more goals so the group at any point in time now i get to roll a d6 they can either gain 1d6 hit points or sandy points and one of them can avoid certain death, which wow, I think we should so test much, that everyone. maybe in the next five or ten minutes. So that brings us up to yes. six. Bring it. Up. Yeah. Bring it. What's they that? Do that. That brings us to six. Avoid certain death. Yes. Hey, did you say five the or ten hours to like pass this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we'll. I don't think we'll. I don't think we'll need that. But yeah, you know, I need. respect that. That's great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're all feeling Chris, cocky with all your biddies. What, what, is, what is this money going to benefit today? This money is going to benefit Vote Riders. That is a great organization doing incredible work. Thank you for that setup, Jen. And they're helping people 
have the right to vote and voting right now is more important than ever especially if we want to protect and take back our country so please donate and help them and enjoy the game thank you everyone and please vote <laughs> please, please yes please, please. have the voting plan please. vote early be safe. Don't vote often. That's that's not. Don't vote often. Yeah, that's vote illegal. often. Vote once. <laughs> Just once. Vote once, but make sure it counts. Yes. Vote once vigorously. My my pets. <laughs> my pets can vote, right? Strike my the voting poll with one d six damage. I can vote on behalf of my dog, right? No. Oh. Right. Unfortunately <laughs> not, but you should absolutely <laughs> check your registration and see if your pets yes. are registered, and also see if yeah. you are registered. Um, uh, Which, there are a bunch of ways to do that. Um, our make tech sure support. You do check. If you are registered to vote, and um, mm -hmm. there are, uh, I will I will get information for everybody that will have state by state voting information. I'll make sure that goes into the chat. Excellent. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. Um, uh, question for you, GM. I'm sorry. I'm uh, I'm not a GM, Ariel. This is called Cthulhu. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a keeper of You're arcane keeper. law. Keeper, keeper, <laughs> keeper, Chris. Um, more works where. Uh, Moore owns a uh, auto shop, and you know it's one fifty first and Broadhurst. You've got Moore's you. address. You've got the address of the hospital, which either way, Leora knows that. You also know that Williams was supposed to have gone to you and an I the other day, and you've got Bex's box, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And we need to check in with the crisis, and we have just now committed to the lieutenant that we would check in on Wright and Moore. Um, are are we um, smart Cthulhu players and going to never split the party? Or are we going to be efficient and dangerous Cthulhu players and divvy up the goods? Purely dangerous. Cast. All the way. Excellent. Yes. We do, so we do we some data the player, free cards. The meta player in me is going, no, don't split the party. But the like fun and reckless part of me is like screw it let's pull up <laughs> yeah follow the reckless okay. playing reckless earns more uh earns more donations y'all there we go this is true there what's we go your, what's your plan heroes um i would have more contacts at the hospital so i might be able to yeah, get sir. information there since i knew bex there seems to make sense agreed uh do you need some place to look at that box, Samoya? Or yeah, I I would I think that I would want to spend some time with the box um, because I I I believe Quinn probably has also an appropriate skill set to go and deal with the crisis or do research or whatever might wherever that path may lead. Should I mean, I, I, sorry, I might play Archibald. That. Yeah, I'm, I th I th uh, I think. I mean, I don't know if I can have good things to study it, but I, I guess I have skills to um, deal with something weird that might come out, hopefully. Um, but I can I can back you up with that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes. So. Uh, so should we drop you at your place and we'll go to the uh, hospital? And then someone needs to go to the auto shop? to try to talk to more, check in on him. Yep. Oh no, uh, my car seems to have developed a, a, a funny noise. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, so to recap, to make sure that I know where everyone's going, mm -hmm. you're sending Amoya to the funeral home with Bex's box. Leora's mm -hmm. going to the hospital alone. Cora is going to the auto shop alone, and Quinn and Killian are going to the crisis. Perhaps we are sp splitting ourselves too much. I think we do. We do have a short amount of time, but yeah, we might want to focus a little more. Maximizing yeah, into, with, into two groups, or yeah, I can go with Lily to the hospital, and then after that, we can go to the uh, mechanic auto, sh auto shop. Okay. So then, uh, to clarify specifically, what do we need to find out? Well, the we lieutenant seemed, alive. yeah, the lieutenant seemed concerned about their welfare since three of their squadron had died. Mm -hmm. So on so the surface of it, we're just 
checking in on them and making sure they're okay. And perhaps you could, um, in a delicate manner, Miss Cora, uh, inform them that their friends are dead and incarcerated. Because <laughs> technically only one of them is dead and two of them are incarcerated. Yes. At this moment. He was a soldier. I figure they can handle a little less delicate. He's not All right. being Lily or anything. We'll start with uh, Cora and Leora. The two of you load up into Cora's car. And are you going to where first? The hospital first? The or hospital to... will be the okay. faster way to go. Also, we should try and figure out why these specific people are being targeted. Well, they probably found something weird when they were, you know, overseas. Uh, Leora, you know that you've never met anyone at the hospital by the name of Samuel Wright? So you're fairly certain that he would not be on the medical staff. Uh, mm -hmm. The two of you easily pull up to the hospital. It is a large building covering multiple blocks. And there it is. Oh, wow. Uh, for Leora, you're quite familiar with it. Cora, you're familiar with it. And a doctor friend, and I use the term friend very loosely, that you have here. I would say more of a um, supplier for things when you need them. Where are you two going? Uh. So I'm, I'm guessing there's probably an entrance where I usually go to find my doctor friend. You usually sort of come in actually through the back where most of the maintenance staff and the cleaning staff would come in through. Leora, you always come into the front door. I'm going to assume I don't know this person. Perhaps Cora would be the way the, the person to follow in this scenario. So even as you sort of show up, there's a large group of people either out front or in back. The people out back are sort of on break smoking and the people out front are either leaving the hospital or coming into the hospital for medical issues. Uh, I, I nod at the uh, people smoking in the back. Uh, as You're I offered a cigarette as soon as you come up. Ah, thanks. Are the two of you going together from this from either direction or going separately? Together? Or is that going to be a problem? That'll make things awkward if we go together. <laughs> Should I go in the front and meet you somewhere? Yeah, I'll, I'll meet you back at the car in 20. Absolutely. Then I'm going to focus my energies on um, maybe, may, maybe obtaining some supplies that could be potentially useful down the okay. line if we get into a situation where we have to sedate someone or restrain someone, that sort of thing. You managed to acquire a couple different things because you actually stopped to inve investigate Bex's body, which you knew was a desiccated, almost warped husk, and something happened, and then something surgically removed his brain. So you start scouring for things you think that might be pertinent to that. Uh, Cora, when you come around back, they give you a cigarette, they go, hey, uh, are you new? No, I'm, I'm here to see Doc. Oh, yeah, you're, oh, you're Doc's friend. Yeah, he, you know, he doesn't come on shift for like another two hours, right? I was hoping he might be here, but um, you wouldn't happen to know, uh, what was the name again? Uh, okay, player forgot the name already. Uh, Samuel Wright? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, Samuel Wright. Does, does Samuel work here? Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, you mean... Yes, very little... Yeah, he's, he's a little stuffy. He works here. He, he's, he, um, he's sort of the, the engineer. He's the closest thing I guess they have to like a head engineer. Which see, basically uh, means he's down in the boiler room. He takes it apart. He puts it back together. That boiler's older than I am, and you're talking to someone in like their late 40s. I don't know how he keeps it going. Magic, maybe. Who knows? Uh, is he in? Yeah, he can't leave till he fixes it. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's if he wants to keep his job. 
uh, down the stairs to the left. It's like you've been here before. And they just sort of like laugh and they, they let you pass. <laughs> and you make your, do you wait for anyone or you just go down by yourself? Uh, no, I just go ahead and go. All right. You make your way down. You're, you're used to this area. This is actually where your white doctor friend would come down and meet you so no one else on the staff really saw you do it. But it's kind of hard to not be seen in the hospital by the people that are always there that people overlook. And so even when you walk in, you see a, a, a striking man, probably in his late 20s, in like gray overall jumpsuit, covered in like grit and oil. And there is a massive boiler half assembled and all the other pieces laid out meticulously. And he stops and glances up at you and then looks back down at the, and start, keeps working. There's no one else here. Um, trying to think, do I actually have any? Mechan- I have a little bit of mechanic work here. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, if if it looks like uh, he he's like reaching for a tool, I like hand it to him. Uh, are Thanks, you man. Uh, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone just calls me Sam. You see, when he stands up, his his overalls have the name Jack on it, and they're a little ill-fitting. Like they're not really supposed to be his, or they're a hand-me-downs. Gotcha. Uh, the lieutenant over at the armory wanted us to make sure you're okay, cause uh, uh, you mean Lance? Yeah. Eh. <laughs> sort of rolls well, his eyes a little bit. Yeah, I mean it was kind of valid. I mean, uh, you know Javier and James. Yeah, they invited me yeah. to some party the other night, but I. And he, like, points down at the boiler. And you see there are yeah, multiple I, I coffee cups all around. Uh, I'm, I'm working. Uh, I just wanted to, to make sure you were okay. Like I said, they, they got taken in, and we wanted to make sure, you know. Taken in else where? Was, uh, the, the, the 132nd. And sort of, like, stops for a long minute and just looks at you. Um, are they okay? Not really. Is Lance doing something? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks for letting me know. I'll go check on him. Uh, have you seen Bex recently? Uh, not for a couple of weeks. He's still working at the college, right? Um, he he was, yes. Uh, I, uh... What do you mean was? He's, uh... We, we kind of found his body. I need... A fast talk, a persuasion, maybe even a charm roll to convey that message that this soldier that you fought on the front lines with for like a couple a couple years that came back home safe is now dead, and we just sort of stumbled over his body like a <laughs> oh. six cents. <laughs> Success. Yeah. Ah, uh, can you? See- we went to check on him after the red party, and there was some shooting, and then they got taken shooting. in, and he was in the same building, so we figured what? we'd check on him while we were there. And... Shooting? So Bex was shot? No, 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 Bex wasn't shot. Or Javier and James shot? Uh, they were shot at, but they were not actually hit. So they were shot at by the police, who then arrested no, them, not, not by the and police. they killed Bex? It, it wasn't the police that shot at them. The, the police took them in. The police arrived after the shooting. <sighs> Let me stop and start over at the beginning. So, we were at this party. They got weird and walked outside. We followed. There was this... <sighs> it looked like an army, but it could have been an army because they just disappeared. Anyway, they shot at us, left holes in the wall and everything. So, something really did shoot at us. Uh, we ducked. Then the cops came and they, they hauled them in. Ma'am, we are you sure that you're all right? No, I'm. I'm. I'm not. Would, would you like some coffee? Do I? Do I need to to get someone for you? No, no, no. I, I said, just came to check on you. Make sure you were okay. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna go check on the guys. And are you sure you're, you're in a hospital, ma'am? I can get you someone to give you some help if you need it. I'm not saying I, that I your story sounds a, a little peculiar. A who's who's going to help take care of me. It'll be fine. Okay. 
she's gonna she's gonna be Ithacar soon. So uh, okay, just keep eyes just just keep eyes open for me. Just it would make me feel better. Just you've got a heads up. It seems like something's going on. Just keep your eyes open. Okay. And you notice that when you're leaving, he's going over to like his locker and looks like he's going to change and leave. And you know that when he leaves, he's going to get fired, but it seems something's more important than staying here doing this. Yeah. I'm trying and to decide if he'd be safer here or not. So. Uh, I do like kind of keep an eye out for him as I, I'm going, going back to the car. Uh, I figure he'll be coming out of that exit that I just went in yeah. through. So I'll just kind of wait and keep an eye uh, for him. And hopefully uh, Leona gets back before he leaves. The two of you are basically at the car around the same time. And you see him get into a beaten, a battered car that's probably only kept together through his knowledge of cars or mores. And he and checks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he checks a sidearm and, and a shotgun in the trunk and then takes off into the snowy, into the snowy world. Um. Uh, we're gonna follow him a little. I just let you, just letting you know, we're we're gonna, cause, yeah. And as you follow him, you see that he goes to where Bex lives first, and sort of goes inside the building. Where did, I'm sorry, where, what building? He goes to Bex's so first. Yeah, it's the apartment building. I'll come back to you too, um, Amoya. You're dropped off. You're in the funeral home downstairs. Your help is there, sort of standing close to you, as always, not breathing. What are you doing? I'm <clears throat> attempt, uh, starting with a cursory uh, uh, examination of the box. Uh, what, is, what, it, what it looks like, if I can tell when or where it's from, what it's made of. Um, secret compartments, uh, just, just starting with the box itself. So as you sort of look at it, you can tell it is definitely handmade and popping it open. Uh, there's a lot of mechanics and widgets inside of it. There is, you're guessing, nothing mystical or occult about it. Um, you do know that one of your um, workers upstairs that you've hired is actually studying to be an engineer. Oh, great. If you want to bring them downstairs. Um, where your other servants that they don't know about reside. Yes. Um, uh, surely uh, I can take the box to a room. That would be a place that this worker would come to. Okay. So you take it upstairs? <clears throat> um yes i went to uh take it upstairs to an empty room with a door i can close okay you take it up and you close the door and melissa comes in after you call for her and she goes oh Nifty. So my parents never, and then she begins to tell you that her parents really never let her do this sort of work when she's at home, but she's glad to be here at work with you right now so that she can look into the box and try to figure out how it's working if that's what you want her to do. But she doesn't want to push you if you don't really feel comfortable with her doing that thing that she really likes to do yes, that darling, you technically what, hired her yeah, to do. No, but yes, if you're not really yes, sure, she yes. won't do it. I would very much love for you to look at the box and see if you can tell me how the box works. And you see that she goes over and she takes out a few tools and plays around with the box for a couple minutes. Uh, and goes, oh, this is some sort of radiation detector. Five minutes in. Definitely detect some sort of radiation. And she's like, if you push this button here, if it was close, it would go off. Hmm. And as far what as are you doing with the radiation the detector? Thing? Is this the only thing the box does? Uh, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your help. Uh, sure. Is there anything else I can do? Not right this moment, but uh, you've your skills are obvious, and I'm sure I will be calling on you again. Glad to hear. So does that mean that I get to stay past a normal two-year period? I've only got a month or so left. 
Uh, we'll talk about that. Glad to be of assistance. All right. Archibald and Killian. You're going to the crisis? Yep. The two of you hop on the train as you have to leave Harlem to go to the crisis. And you make your way over to the New York Evening Post building. Can everyone see it? Mm -hmm. As you know that the crisis is actually being held is held there because that's where Du Bois wanted it. He didn't want to leave it just in Harlem. He wanted to show that black excellence was more of a global thing than just confined to one certain spot in the city. And you make your way to the main offices there. It's probably around one-ish when you get there. And you're greeted by Jesse, who comes over to you and goes, Archibald, I was so hoping that you'd come in. I read your last book. Mm -hmm. I read and it. What'd you think? I read it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did, uh... There's a long pause. You've, you've got a lot of potential. I appreciate you saying that. And what I really wanted to see if I could get you to do is maybe if I could get you to write some articles for the crisis, maybe I could help you workshop a little bit. Because I, I like to help other artists do achieve what they their potential. I mean, uh, you know, that could be a good opportunity. Um, uh, I mean, that, now, uh, out of character, I, I, I just want to be clear. What are we looking for here? Uh, you know that Bex came here and was doing research or something, and you have an empty file folder from here that Bex had. That was due two days ago. Ah, uh, and your friend, and she points oh. at the... The grizzled, older man behind you. Uh, Are you a writer too? No, no. I'm just sort of helping. We're on a bit of um, a fact-finding mission, if you will. Uh, you, you are... Um, Jesse, I'm just... I work... I'm the the line editor, basically, is the best way to find uh, it. And so Jane I'm... Burn. And as since Du Bois is out right now, I'm just sort of running the entire the entire shop till he gets back. Right, right. I'm just a grocer, um, but I'm here helping Archibald. Uh, it's sort of a bit of a personal mystery. And there's a very quizzical look. Um, okay, <laughs> and he looks um, back at you. Um, <laughs> grocer. grocer. Uh. Do you know someone? And so we have the. Do we have the uh, file empty file folder? Yeah. Um, do you know a uh, uh, Bex? Uh, ah, like Mr. Williamson. Yeah, I I, I know yeah. him. Quite the talker, that Mr. Williamson. Yeah. Um, when was the last time you saw him? Um, maybe a week and a half ago. Two weeks. He was supposed to have returned some articles for it back to us but I always keep hard copies of everything just in well I keep a spare copy of everything just in case okay um, and uh, did you um, uh, do you remember anything that you sort of talked about uh, yeah he was concerned about a soldier that was shell shocked from some encounter that happened at the recruitment office in, in New York uh, this is maybe three weeks ago. Before that, he was obsessed with researching something about radiation. And I tried to explain to him that we didn't have a lot of necessarily books about scientific discoveries. But he said something about it being linked to music and radiation. And if he understood music better, he could make some sort of uh, correlation between the two. And I gave him access to the, the coal files below. Uh... Okay. Um, 
can I like can I use like a cult to like see if, if anything if any of these scenes sort of like given what we already know sort of collide together? Sure, make me roll. Okay. Dictant cult. Um. Oh, God. Can I uh, use a reroll, folks? Please. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's going to be hard to do worse, so go for it. Oh. But not go impossible. In. Okay. Wow. Hold there. So, go. Extreme success. It, okay. It takes you a couple minutes as the two of you go back and forth, and then it just sort of like hits you all at once, like a tidal wave. If Bex was looking at something that dealt with scientific research and music, but also dovetailed into radiation, obviously whatever this box is that Bex built must somehow track a specific wavelength of radiation that is influenced by music. And it is sort of all, with your multiple roles, it all just verbally spills out of you to Jesse and Killian at once. And so there must be some sort of harmonic resonance in the universe. And she looks at you, and she looks at Killian, and goes, that's an interesting theory. Um, I'd like to see you write, write about that. And she goes back to work. <laughs> Fair. Um, so, you know, but, so then I'll look over at Killian. So, so what do you think? Um, I, um, gonna, gonna level with you here. This is a bit beyond my, uh, mediocre level of education, but, um, I think you're on to some very interesting principles. I think if you were to develop it properly and perhaps present a proper manuscript here to the production office, maybe they'd go ahead and find a place for you to put it out there. But uh, what do I know? I'm just a grocer. <laughs> well, I mean, that, all of that seems like it's going to take a bunch of time. I think maybe in the meantime, we should go. Oh, right, right. The yes. others. Good I call. <laughs> Can I ask a history question? You may get an uh, answer. If the Phoenix Squadron had um, done anything interesting or noteworthy uh, during the war, would the crisis be the kind of place that would document it? Was that what they did? I can't quite remember. They would have definitely have written an article or two about it. Um, so perhaps that's useful to our investigators? Maybe. Since they're standing there? I mean, we, uh, we could, we could uh, make a, you know, uh, one more thing. Um, uh, I know you're busy, um, but do you have anything about the Phoenix Squadron? Uh, yeah. Can I uh, take a peek? Sure. And she like goes over and, and hands it over to you. There you go. Um, after Williamson started coming in, I sort of duck around to find it so I could read up about them. Interesting. You find anything... Uh, I mean, I guess it's here, but uh, anything uh, that you thought was uh, noteworthy? I did, hand? but I really want to see what you're going to come up with from it. It's like everything is a little bit of a test to like, to she, sort oh, of she, like hone in your skills. And you get the feeling that your aunt has probably called a lot of people that she knows to have them do this for you. Thanks, aunt. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, th literally thank you, but also... Oh, okay, you know, like, okay, well, I'll, I'll have something for you. And Don't worry, so, Archibald, I, I believe in you. <laughs> and He's the other thing else. that occurs to you now with all that other thought with your extreme success is that you do remember that it made a beeping sound in Bex's apartment. It was faint, like it was picking up something, and well, then when you well, got I'm away from we Bex's right apartment, a, a, it stopped. A, like a party, right? But in Bex's apartment, it beeped. When you left Bex's apartment, it stopped. And so, as you're flipping through the magazine, The Crisis, from a, about a year or two ago, you see that Phoenix Squad has, like, decorated. They fought at, like, the Battle of Bellinwood and talks about their two former French commanders. And then there's an, an additional article sort of, like, stuck in there that talks about how one of the commander's graves was desecrated maybe six months ago. And dug up, and the body was left in a twisted, shattered remains. Like they can't even they could they can only identify it because it was still in the coffin. But it was warped and twisted, and the description of it matches what you saw in Bex's apartment of Bex's body. Oh, 
You're muted. You're muted. So that might have been the first being the first brain being that it like the thing rode and then is maybe it's going through the folks or some the the people in the squadron i don't know killian and archibald can you both make me sanity rolls as you come to this conclusion sure yeah if you made it you lose nothing if you failed you lose one point okay i made it made it we both made it it's, it's a little disturbing, but nothing compared to what you've seen so far. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, well, I'm trying to think, where, where is, the be- uh, is the best place Chorus to go? Uh, you mean to you. Amoyas? Amoyas, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Let's go ahead and make our way back to Amoyas, see if we can go ahead and uh, coordinate, put down on the table what we've all found and see what mm-hmm. seems to shake out. Let's see what we can do with All that right. box. All right. The two of you hop back on the train and make your way back to Moyas. Leora and Cora, the two of you load up into Cora's car after you've followed Sam, who goes into the apartment where Bex lives. Then you continue on to Moore's and you make your way further north to Moore's Auto Shop. Is that is did Will uh, yeah? Give me one second. Did Williams leave or sorry, not Williams? Right, leave Dex's and also go there? Uh, no, he stayed. Okay. He went in, and I'm assuming that you left after you saw him go inside. Are you waiting for him to come back out? Uh, I'll give it like 15 minutes. See what he does. If he doesn't come out like quickly, no. then yeah. You wait around 15, 20 minutes. He doesn't come back out. Okay. Then yeah. And then you make your way to. Moore's Auto Shop. And even as you sort of step out of the car with the banging noise that it's making, which is the reason you came here, you see this note on the door. Huh. Mm. Mm. Interesting. I have to go to Georgia. Puh. Which, get back in the car Cora <laughs> without you don't have to roll you know unequivocally no one that escaped from the south to live up here would go back down yeah. south I for a visit um I like uh, get out of the car and, and, and kind of like just take a walk around the building it's a two-story stone building. There's a few, one or two gas tanks outside. Most of them are closed because it's in the winter. Uh, there are no lights on, and you don't see anything immediately disturbed that jumps out at you. Is the is the the noise uh, louder in any place in particular? No, it's completely quiet inside, from what you can hear. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the noise on my car is where I disabled something really quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. It's not a real problem. Uh, um, is there a neighbor? No, the shop sort of stands alone, and then you've got almost like a little block of an area around it. And then you've got other auxiliary businesses, and most of those businesses are closed because they look to be more sort of summer or fall businesses, and you are in the dead of winter. Huh. Do you want to fill up the car while we're here? We don't have case. to pay for it. No, we can pay for it. I look, I look where are we going to pay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was a thought. Um, uh, all right, I think we should see if anything is inside. Do you try the door? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll try to see if the door is unlocked. The door's locked. Just, yeah, just like... But it's an old lock, and you're sure for you this would be like 10, 15 seconds at most? I like look up and down the block and make sure nobody is looking at me. It is, it is a cold, snowy day. Visibility is minimal at best. It's cold out, and both of you are getting colder the longer you stand out in the snow and cold. And then I'll open the door. <laughs> and 
The door is unlocked. Magic. Do you just go in? Yeah. Make me a luck roll. <laughs> yeah. Both of us or just... Um, both of you. I'll let both of you try this. I... I... I was gonna say I don't have anything in me, so. Uh, luck is gonna be an attribute yeah. that's on the top, and. Yep, I found it. I accidentally pushed it twice, so hopefully we'll take the first roll, not the second one. <laughs> Let me know if you made it. Oh, I have number. I have no number in my luck. <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. That's why I was confused. Uh, but pushing it actually does work. Um, uh, so the no. first one I got a seventeen out of twenty-nine. Um. Uh, so yes, what happens is, Cora, as you push open the door, you catch this little stick, like this metal stick that falls in your hand, and you've caught it. And it's heating up like it's about to explode. I throw it in... Oh, shit. Throw it further. Leora. Further, yeah. You see she's <laughs> leaning back. That is definitely a explosive stick, and you're, you can almost identify the unit that used it from World War I. And she's about to throw it. What are you doing? And do you I can tell it's live. Do I know how to disarm it? You do know how to disarm explosives. That's on a good day. Uh, we're at a gas station throwing. It's not a good idea. Can, uh, if, I can disarm, if, I, if I'm confident I can disarm it, then I will. Otherwise, aim it as far away as we can. Um. If you'd look at your demolition skill or your explosive skill, and let me know uh, if you feel confident doing that. Uh, what would explosives be? One minute. Demolitions. Demolitions. Oh, um, no. Okay, I think we throw it as far away as we can. Yeah, I, I throw it in the opposite direction of the the gas tanks, but that that's about it, as much as aiming as I'm it's doing. Going to Cora, attention to. make me a throw roll. As you <laughs> hurl this live explosive in the center of Harlem, in, into the distance. <laughs> can I have uh, a reroll? Re <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you still have a few rerolls left. Success. <laughs> and so you hurl it as far as you can. And that reduces the damage considerably as it still explodes more in the air. Oh, that was like nothing. You guys are lucky. Uh, exploding in the air, hitting you both for one point of damage. Enough to knock you to the ground, basically. And if there's anyone around, they're definitely coming. But the door is open. And what unit did that come from? You've narrowed it down to some almost like a scientific division just from the make and model of the explosive. You would have really had to have been able to see it up close, might be having disarmed it to identify them closer. Do I know what country? They fought primarily in France. Great. I don't think they're in Georgia. Um, what do we see inside? As you sort of peer inside with the light from the door, there's a just streak of dark colored liquid on the floor, which both of you know from your own lives and what you've done, that's definitely dried blood and a lot of it. We should get out of here. We should get out of here fast. Great. That much blood is is yeah. We should get out of here fast. So you're leaving? Yeah. The blood is dry. It's clear it's been a while. It's been a little while, yes. It's not completely gone, so Guessing maybe it could be hours, less than a day. All right. I do like look uh, as we're leaving, like over the door to see where the thing dropped from. 
Uh, it looks like there was a trap that was rigged inside of the door was opened. Do I recognize that style of trap? Yes. It was common for the other side during the war. They would leave them behind allied lines. I'm sorry, can you say that again? They'd leave that behind allied lines. Well, the good news is he haven't called any attention to your guys' location, so... Fine. We should go. Yeah. The, the two of you load Get up off. into the car <laughs> and drive at a casually pace, not to hopefully draw any attention. And I you're maybe a few minutes away minutes. as the police cars pass by. Obviously having been called out. Where do you two go? Explosion in the air. <laughs> uh... I guess head back to Amoyas. Actually, I would like to swing by Bex's first to see if Wright is still there. Like if his car is still there. His car's gone. Okay. Then yes, Amoyas. And you make your way back to Amoyas. The group of you are all there once again. Um, sitting upstairs, downstairs, it's your choice. The staff brings a, a nice little light meal for everyone. The real staff, not the staff below. Okay, I was like, is, is that the... No, no, that staff, that staff stays staff? in the basement. <laughs> Zombie staff isn't just coming around with, hello, would you like a cocktail? No, no they do not. <laughs> I mean, for me, for me, but not for you. <laughs> so what are you all doing? You've got clues, um, you've seen some things. Uh, I'm, you know, before everybody sort of comes back, um, I'm, I'm definitely uh, spending a good amount of time uh writing in my writing kind of the notes so far in a journal and like grumbling a little bit that i have like homework right <laughs> like, like oh my god like what i'm the only person here with homework but you know i, I have this theme to write now um but yeah like uh just and, and also using it to sort of help like clarify what's going on okay well uh uh, sorry, uh, Archibald and Killian got back first, correct? They were already at at the For home? simplicity, I'm letting everyone get back around the same time. Okay. Hmm. Um, well, I'm certainly very interested to hear what everyone discovered. So I assume there's an exchange of information? Yeah. Uh, and so it seems that uh, um Mr. Moore booby trapped his own garage. Well, catch... somebody booby trapped the garage. No, well, but uh, Miss Lily says that the, the no, both it was used. It was just to clarify. It was used by the enemy, correct? Yes. Oh, by the enemy. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Okay. Yes, it was. It was not traditionally used by. Interesting. Our side. And, and nobody just goes back to Georgia once you leave. Just saying. You're correct. I, you couldn't pay me to go back to Georgia. Correct. So I, I don't believe. Hmm. So, so it's not it, his it trap. They're doing. My my guess is that he is not well. <laughs> if I had to guess, it was his blood. Possibly oh, other yes. people's too. Great. The blood. Yeah. So um, it, it would seem that someone is, is systematically chasing down and so, this squadron. Right. And somebody that they 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 fought and maybe they unlocked some weird being that was also on the side of the Nazis from what they're what they're using there for their for their tools if if they're responsible for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it looks like maybe Bex had clued into that. That that box is a looks uh, from from what we can gather some type of maybe, maybe tracker um, that oh. could, could be used to track that thing because we had we heard it beeping in the house and when yes. it got away it stopped beeping. So we could possibly um, go around to these things and use a box to find whatever this was. Uh, um, though uh, I'll say I'm not sure how great of an idea uh, that is, but uh, for our own health. 
And as you do say that and you point towards the box, you notice that it beeps ever so softly the closer Cora gets to it for a few moments. Me? And on that note, we're going to take a five-minute break, everybody. Uh, <laughs> thank you for all your wonderful donations. Um, I'm going to tally up all the bennies I got, and I'm going to figure out how I want to magnify the mythos to make this a little bit scarier for the time that we have left. So we'll see everybody in five minutes. Beep, but I get close to it. It's not scary enough. <laughs> Uh, scary enough, trust him. <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone. I just as an FYI, I'm pretty sure the mics are hot, so keep that in mind for your breaks. All right, back here in a few minutes. <laughs> See you in a second.
Okay, apparently Aldous Hodge is going to be Hawkman in the Black Adam movie. Yeah. Yes. That's pretty awesome, right? That's kind of crazy. That's cool. That's <laughs> rad. I love it. <laughs> kind of want to know which, which so version good. of Hawkman, though. All right. Yeah, I, is, if everyone's ready, the world out there can hear us, and we can go ahead and go live if you guys are ready. Can everyone can hear listen? me? Yep. Loud and clear. Going live visually in three, two, one. 
two, at least I figured out now how to work this out. One. <laughs> Hey everybody, and we're back. Just to do the, the quick recap for everyone, they've discovered that the Bex's box picks up radiation. They know that Cora gives off a faint radioactive signal signature for some mm. reason. And time is ticking. What are you all doing? Know the New York Evening Post wants to give feedback to Archibald's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think feedback. I think I think I think I think notably they don't want to give me feedback about my poetry, <laughs> and they'd rather have me write something else, yeah. which in itself is a form of feedback. I'm, <laughs> I'm still processing. Just, just a couple of notes. <laughs> I told you your character was related to a legacy character of the Harlem Renaissance. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So with all that in mind, what's your plan? So when it start when it starts beeping, you know, I, I guess sort of like a Archibald's head is like full of all this stuff, and right now he's just gonna be like, "So you must have come near this thing." Me? Well, weren't you just at, um, you know, right? uh, or not right? Right, uh, Morse. Morse. Yes. Um, but it, it doesn't beep when I come close to it? No. <laughs> All right, Did we're going to try something weird. So I'm going to put the hand that didn't catch the, uh, the, the the bomb close to it, see if it does anything, and then I'm going to put the pot hand that did catch the thing, that yeah. the bomb, and see if it does anything different, or if it's just, you know... So, whenever Cora gets close to it, it gives off a faint beep like she's been close to something radioactive recently. Respectfully, <laughs> I am going to just place my hand towards my gun and look very cautiously <laughs> towards Cora. <laughs> but she does not seem... Does she seem strange in any of the ways that Bex seemed strange that night in the apartment? Not at all. Okay, very good. I'd like to hope I knew about Just that. Just gotta <laughs> double check. Yeah, that's not usually how that works. <laughs> um, after a couple uh, more minutes, it fades. And she doesn't give off that signature anymore. Interesting. Um, I would like to have my people uh, watch or as they do their rounds around the city uh check on the garage to see when the police have done their thing um and i would like to use my back channel to the morgue to see if they pull a bot if they collect a body and take it to the morgue or not okay so that'll take them a few hours to figure out sure start things now okay what are you doing? What are the rest of you doing till then? So, uh, Samuel went to Bex's and then he left, but we don't know where he went. Mm -hmm. We can assume he probably got. Well, he might not have gotten completely fired. I mean, I guess he could have gone back to the hospital to keep working on the thing, but he had a shotgun, which. Okay, I carry a shotgun in my trunk, but that's a totally different. I. <sighs> I'm very surprised that a, a gentleman who works in a hospital would carry a shotgun in his trunk. Let's just say that. He was a soldier, though. Yes. And if, and if, this, if, and if this creature is a bit of unresolved business from the war, maybe they thought they got away from it, but... This is the, not the type of thing that you get away from easily? Well, he is the best link we have to what is going on and potentially the creature. Uh, because it would seem that Phoenix Squadron is, as a whole is somehow connected. It would make me believe that 
the appearance that we saw in the street at the rent party, its location was not random. Right, right. There were we three this? members of oh. Phoenix Squadron oh. in the building. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, go on. Oh, just a few thoughts. Um, one, we know that the creature escaped the van, and we could perhaps track down where the van is uh, tied. Um, also, what more can we find out about Phoenix Squadron? Perhaps we can unlock some information there. And I'll pull out, I'll pull out these notes, I'll, you know, like I, I'll, I'll pull out some of those articles and stuff we got because I don't think we've pro that, that's what I was getting ready to ask. Uh, like if we've pro if we haven't looked through those or processed those, maybe we can like all sort of spread out the articles and sort of take a look now. Most of the stuff that you actually end up going through just talks about there was a soldier that had some sort of unusual encounter at the recruitment office that was another part of New York. And that soldier un underwent shell shock and was claiming to have seen undead soldiers attacking the armory. And, and, and who was it? It was a, a Rocco Morlini, and he was dismissed. Mm. Well. And he's he still around somewhere? Uh, the paper does not include an address for him. But you know that a recruitment office also probably has all of the soldiers' records that came back from the war. At least that office specifically does, and it's mentioned in the article. Mm -hmm. It was a recruitment and records office, basically. Okay. Um, maybe Are there can... any other named members of the Phoenix Squadron mm -hmm. listed anywhere in the... No, but you also know that you have all the names of them because they were given to you by Lance. And yeah. when you spoke to Javier and Smithson, they only repeated the same names to you. There yeah. was five members from Harlem, and then they had two French officers that were attached to them. Right. And you know what happened to one of those French officers. His body got desecrated. Okay. So how many of them do we know are still alive? You know for certain, unequivocally, three of them are still alive. You're unsure of more, who may or may not have been killed in his home, but you know without a doubt, Bex is dead. He may not stay down, but he's dead. Mm -hmm. And the two others are in police custody. So, mm -hmm. I think our best idea is if this thing beeps whenever it gets too close to anything weird. If we go to those clubs... You said it, not me? With the box... Yeah, I know, I'm weird. Go ahead. Uh, with the box, and if it beeps near any of the clubs, then we might have an idea that maybe we should investigate said club a little more closely. I think it's about Which... as sound as an idea as I've heard this, uh, this day so far. Why not? Let's follow a beeping box. Well, I certainly want to talk to Rocco Morlini. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience, but I can't imagine that the recruitment office is going to give out his information to just anybody. Um, uh, perhaps uh, we can circle back around and see if we can recruit more to assist us get that information. Um, or maybe someone knows better than me and with enough, with a little bit of friendliness and a show of concern, uh, the recruitment office will give us information for Rocco Morlini. Considering I just said I, at the recruitment office, well, I guess that wasn't the recruitment office, that was the armory. Yeah, so that was the armory. Well, I mean, if, if Rocco... I mean, off. If Rocco was, you know, it recorded in the paper as going kind of uh, what, what people think is going crazy, mm -hmm. um, but we know actually has uh, several um, horrifying grains of truth to it, um, it's possible that they might be worried about him, and if we're looking after his welfare, they might we might be able to sort of talk him into like, hey, let us help him out. That's true. Um, also, um, what are we going to do when we find these things? Clearly, mm. we're not of any sort of uh, strength to, to battle them, at least based on our lust. Well, I don't have a plan yet, but I am working on that. Fair enough. So uh, the next step is... Because I know a priest. 
do that. <laughs> it's not the worst idea ever. Um, so, yeah, Miss Corey, you did an excellent job with the lieutenant. Um, do we want to roll the dice at just trying to uh, let you charm information out of uh, whoever we might encounter at the recruitment office? Is the recruitment office in Harlem? No, you'd have to leave Harlem. Okay, so these are white people. <laughs> yes. Maybe we should send Miss Lily instead. Uh, so you do know that the article, while it doesn't give us exact address, does say that Rocco lived in East Harlem. Huh. Perhaps we could find um, someone who knows. Does it say anything else about what he did or... He just worked at the recruitment office. Although the group of you do know that you could potentially call Lance, who is now friendly to you, who Ooh, is in the military, the that could potentially yeah. find his address if you wanted it. Yeah, yeah let's try let's that. Let's do that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Remind me where my where I live, where my home is <laughs> in Harlem. It was a vague, amorphous. We never really decided, but your home is actually right here. You see it? Okay, so I'm I'm on the west side. Oh, gosh, I'm west of St. Nicholas Park. Okay. Very good. Just saw some, it's like five blocks from where I used to live. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was out of character. My um, intentional. All right, so what's your plan, <laughs> folks? We're on a ticking clock. You've got about 52 minutes. Uh, so to Rocco, to, to call, call Lance. And then yes, to we're going to call Lance. I, do you, do you, I assume you have a phone here in Moya. Several, yes. Uh, yeah, let's call Lance and see if we can find Rocco. Um, you, when you call him, he gets, you hear Lance. That's all he says. Very busy. I hope this is urgent, whoever this is. I'm trying to free important people. That means they're still alive. I'm assuming they're, you're making a call. Are, are you saying no. anything? You're oh, I can, I can make the. That, that's fine, L L it's Lieutenant Lance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my God, he seems so. He seems so charmed by you, uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Lance. This is Amelia Clark. We. Uh, yes, Miss Clark. I, I understand. Are you calling to tell me that you've got Bex's body in? Uh, I am not, unfortunately. Um, in keeping with the spirit of checking in on Phoenix Squadron, uh, we were wondering if you could help us locate Rocco Morlini. I could probably have that addressed to you in a few hours if it's pertinent. I think that it may very well be yes. All right. Um, is what's the number to reach you at? I give him my number. Okay. And you can you can you can, you can relay the information to anyone who answers the phone here. Thank you. I will. Warn him about more. Uh, <laughs> warn him about more. Um, tell him that I know something, but I don't know something. No, th there was at Moore's home. Yes, that, that was that's, big that's, I'm, I'm confirming. This is information that we want to share with him now. Yes. This speculation that we have, this thing that we mm -hmm. that you sort of saw. A big pool of blood in the bottom of his garage? And a, yeah. yeah. A booby trap explosive, yes. Yeah, I mean, he can probably... Okay, so uh, I tell him about the experience at the garage. Um, and uh, so I know sure the police that... called me and informed me that Sergeant Moore is deceased along with his brother, a cousin, and some... It's a very gruesome scene from my understanding. They said they hadn't shared that information with the news, the press, or anyone else. Can I ask how you would know that? Um, you asked us to check in on him, and uh, a, a couple of the people that were in your office went to his garage, um, encountered the explosive, as I explained, and the pool of blood... Uh, and and at that point, left. Well, I will only say that they say that they could hardly recognize more, and they only know that it was him because of the uniform he was wearing. His body was twisted and mangled, almost beyond recognition. Well, a theme. let's be thankful that Miss Cora and Miss Lily did not actually stumble upon those bodies. Then I appreciate the information, sir. Thank you. I'll get you that inf the other information about Rocco's address. That would be fantastic. 
now you know for certain there are two dead Hellfighters. Ha. Two are in jail, and right is in the wind. We think there's probably a decent chance that uh, Wright's going to go ahead and try and find his way to his old remaining squad mates. In the jail? Maybe. There's two out of three are currently relegated to that place there. At least we could drive by and see if your strange beeping box has any sort of reaction. That's exactly what well, I was it's thinking. It's not my box. I'm just saying. <laughs> um... the, the royal your... <laughs> we we could go by drive go by the garage and have the box confirm what we all already suspect uh and getting the box out in the world is how we get closer to some end uh it is it nighttime yet i'm time it's probably around five or six at night yes okay so we're getting close to dark no it's December. It's probably already dark. Yeah, it is. So we can... That was an evil GM smile. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that um, So we can start our hunt for the van. And uh, I've already asked my people to keep an eye out for the van as they're out and about. Okay. Um, uh, so and perhaps the, van, the box there, will help there us. Were, there are a limited number of places could be using it, correct? There were only a certain number of clubs that would be able to use that. No, Cora thinks anywhere enough. from like 8 to 12, probably. Yeah, That's but true. if we're just driving by and seeing if it beeps, it's a lot faster than, you know, investigating every single one. True. So I'm not sure that's enough. It beeped in the apartment, but not on the, f on the ground floor of the building. If you've got a better idea. Which Archibald will tell you with his insane insight is that the signature is stronger likely if whatever it's attached to is he goes alive compared to dead or if you only had like a, a limited reaction to it the signature is probably weak and fades relatively quickly mm. okay, yeah. so at some point I mean, is it going to be live when it uh, goes at someone, or? Well, you would. Your first thought, with your critical success, would be that your <laughs> likely course of action would be to figure out what did Cora have contact with that none of the rest of you, or who she had contact with, but none of the rest of you had contact with. Oh. More. The, oh. Yeah, the the guy. Um, was it Moore's dead? Moore's deceased. That was his auto shop. Uh, but, um, uh, who, uh, was it Samuel? Samuel Wright. No, yeah, Samuel Wright. Samuel Wright. Like yeah, like you actually taught. Yeah, Cor Cor you talked with Samuel Wright, and that and that could be why you have why why you gave off some of that. And so maybe that's the person we need to track down. And do we know? Do we know where he lives? No, you just had a work location. Uh, do, do, would Lance be able to help us with that? Lance provided you everyone else's home address except for Wright, who he gave you a work address. And you know from talking to Javier and Smithson, Wright's been moving around a lot since they got back. He doesn't have one central home location. Oh. Uh, you might be more likely to find out from his co-workers where he might have been crashing the last so many nights or weeks. Maybe. Possibly. Still in shift. Could hurt. Um, Granted. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can, we can, we can run and do that. I mean, we should. So, so I feel like we should go together at this point, um, and we should probably maybe have that box on hand. Mm -hmm. Where we're going. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. Okay. So the group of you exit out of the funeral home towards Cora's car. Can everyone make me a hard? Spot hidden roll. Spot hidden. Spot hidden. Spot. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you made okay. it. Hard is going to be half of your skill, basically. Oh, hold on. So hold on. Let me. Uh, well, I um, I made a regular one, but I failed either way. Um, we want to use reroll. I I think some of us should. 
Um, I, 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 I can uh, do it. I've got a 45. Yeah, I'll hand that off um, to you. I use arrow triple balls. What Sorry, do you I hope the shot I see? Oh, mean to click it twice. Uh, one more. Please. Oh, so, so close. Oh, there we go. Yay! There you go. You just about burned through all <laughs> your rerolls now. So, yeah, how, how many did we just spend? I used uh, I spent one reroll. I didn't I mean spent. to click it twice. I that was not an intentional reroll. I spent reroll. two. So, Archibald, three, for you. Th three rerolls? Is that correct? Yes. Okay, so we are you. at uh, 18. Good. Okay. Does anyone else out? Would all of you like to reroll again before I do what I'm about to do? Because success only helps one person. You know what? Sure. Why not? Not that we're in the last 40 minutes and I'm going to up everything really quick. Sure rolls a two! All right. He's used to spotting stuff in and amongst the produce. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wait, who and hasn't all stocked all the, the macaroni? <laughs> so did anyone else make it other than Matthew? Because right now I have Archibald and Matthew. And you're down. Oh, no, I, I, I made it. it. I made it. Leora made it. it. Oh, Leora made it. All right. I didn't make it. Yeah, it was Leora. So the only person who made it was Leora? Mm hmm. And Killian. So a car whips around the corner over icy, snowy roads. We recognized you, butcher! And two Tommy guns out the window unleash a hail of bullets on the group of you. Leora and Killian. You can make a dodge roll. Everyone else, nice. this is going to hurt a lot. Okay. Ooh, let's reroll that. Oh, one more. Oh, no! <laughs> of course. Of course. Dodges. Look. It's only appropriate. <laughs> I've been dodging hailstorms of bullets most of my adult life. <laughs> so, did were either Lior or Killian able to dodge? I was. Killian. Killian. As always, living to your name, you died for cover, <laughs> saving yourself. Hard. I'm so sorry. I had that on hard and was rolling those. It, it wouldn't have mattered. It, they were all still failures. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. <laughs> the rest of you take 13 points of damage as bullets oh, rip gosh. through your person. Oh, my God. Damn. Now, Here we go. would you like... Wait. You still got, I think, hit point binnies from the last game. If you'd like to use those now. You don't have to. Oh, wait. It's not like I'm prone to do something else in a second. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what, what are the hit point bennies? Um, we were at uh, 50, we had 52 total you can buy off 52 points of damage there's 1, 2, 3 4 of you that took 13 points of damage so we have that would be all of us not all... taking that damage <laughs> I mean, what, yeah. what if? What if so, what, wow, what if that we, is awesome! On the nose, I didn't even plan that. Yeah. That's beautiful. What, what, so, what if we all took like six or something? I feel like if we blow it up. Uh, well, don't forget, thing. we did break another thing where you can get back one d six hit point or one d six sanity. This is from last session, so it's a matter of do you want to take damage now? Who knows if they're going to shoot next round? And they did shout the name. Butcher, we remember you. You shouldn't have come back uptown. Mm. Mm. Feeling like this is not about me. Let's get oh, some. Oh, so oh, let's get some hit points way. back. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. Do, do yeah. we want to use the the one d six or do we want to use the the points? Let's use the points, and then okay. we can use the one d six. How much do we want to get back? I am at fourteen out of twenty eight. I don't know. I'm at nine out of twenty two. Well, okay. you each took thirteen points of damage, so yeah, just... that would take me down to fourteen. So, yeah, do you want to do you want to spend your fifty-two to like totally eradicate that opening volley, so you're fresh, or do you want to try to split it up and use like fractions? I don't have an opinion about this. Do we want to do like ten points back each? I'm no, good. With, I'm good with that. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So that was forty. Uh, Thirty points go back. Uh, Forty points go back. Yes. All right, so you're sitting with 12 points left you can soak, right? Yes. So, uh, yes, we have 12 okay. points left to soak. 12 points you can soak, and everyone that just get hit, if you want, you can go ahead and roll a 1d6 to regain that many hit points right now, and you still have 12 hit points in the bank. And you've burned that other binny that you just got. I like oh. math. Sorry! <laughs> As the person it was targeted for, Laughs safely behind a car. Can, can I? Can I? Um, 
It's a nervous chuckle. Can I can I like sort of represent that um, the sort of uh, avoidance of it as kind of like throwing up like a quick sort of telekinetic sort of shield to glance them off of, like yes. just a reaction. So describe that to us. As it works for uh, yeah. everyone, describe it to it. Okay, yeah, um, I just sort of like, um, and part of my thing, I uh, catch it, can't like dodge and just sort of like throw my hands up. I don't even think I'm like, like most of the time I've sort of like, sort of recite some poetry or do something to focus, but like this one is just like a quick like propulsion and you just like see kind of like a wave of the bullets sort of like scatter um, before they hit Archibald. And the car whips around the corner with a, we'll be back. Is that rush behind an Archibald? I'm like, that's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I like look up from my bleeding arm. <laughs> all I right. just like punch you in the arm. <laughs> what are you all doing? <laughs> so, uh, friends of yours? Well, I, I, I'm certainly sure a few of you may have assumed I've not been above the board in all my professional pursuits in the past. Seeing some of these hens are coming back to roost, and I'm sorry, the timing is, to be specific, very inconvenient. I mean, it would be okay, but these hens have Tommy guns. Right, yeah, the worst kind of hens. Yeah. Armed. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> did you do something specific to these guys, or did you just generally piss them off with your sparkling personality? <laughs> There's a long, kind of listful sigh before Killian goes, I've done a lot of bad things for many years. It's hard to keep track, Miss Cora. What time you know is which tough on all of us? These were? So. Or is there a list equally long? <laughs> I'm also, strangely for a grocer, terrible at keeping lists. Um, but you know what? While the bullets aren't flying, I think perhaps our best bet is to just keep doing what we were doing and get away from where they know we are. So also lead on, please. Is it worth trying to disguise you a bit? Make you not quite so you? <laughs> Grab some, like, dirty snow on the ground and smeared on like Schwarzenegger and Predator. <laughs> Just, yeah. No, no. And as adult. the group of you finally get to the car, you do notice that the wind is picked up and it is colder than it should be. Cora, you, sorry, Amoya, you know for a fact this wind is not natural. Everyone takes one point of damage as it bites Ooh. through you. What's the box cold. doing? HP? HP damage? Yes, one, one hit point. And you even feel frost is sort of like on your fingertips within minutes of walking from your door to the car. What's the box doing? The box is doing nothing right now. All right. So you're just driving around trying to see where it beeps? Is that the plan? Um, Pretty much. Uh, being intentional about swinging by... His auto shop? It He's goes off incredibly strong when you go by Moore's auto shop, which you see is completely closed, and there is, in fact, one police car parked in front of it, covered, slightly covered with ice and snow. Is there anybody in the car? Yes, it's running, and it looks okay, like the check. heater is barely keeping the ice and snow at bay. Okay. We're, I'm not even going to slow down as I'm driving past the police car. Uh, just, you know, proceed. But if it's beeping, it's like, huh, okay, good to know. Um, I also want to swing by the hospital. Mm -hmm. Was it a 30-second precinct police car? That was a 131st. Okay. So you're going by the hospital? Yeah. Okay. When you get there, you notice that the there is no one outside. It is bitterly cold. Unsurprising. Amoya, you do have a nagging feeling that something is happening. All right, Cora, what do you At the hospital? No. Okay. Hmm. It's not good. Broader than that. Cora, what are you yeah. doing? All right. Uh, you stay here. 
I'll go see if anybody knows where. You want to circle front and back and see which is more active? When you drive by, there's no one outside at all. It is that cold. Everyone is realizing they need to stay inside. Uh, perhaps... I think that it might be wise um, that Mr. Killian could accompany Miss Cora and you, the More than happy to. Entrance. Okay. Just for a little well, extra caution. I suggest caution. Mr. Archibald instead. Hey, I don't want to get shot at again. I, I <laughs> entirely, <laughs> well, entirely respect yes. your decision making in this circumstance. Uh, hey, Archibald, by all means. We're going in the back door? Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to raise too many red flags. Well, it's after hours and there will be less people around. Yeah, um, sure. th- I was thinking of a particular type of protection, but but Mr. Work, uh, is, Miss, yeah, Miss, Mr. Quinn will be will will suffice. The two well, of you like, race you know. to the back of the hospital through the cold, and even as you do, you do notice that it is starting to like sort of hang on buildings. And you go inside. Mm-hmm. There's a the staff of people sort of like huddled around um, a heater, equivalently, and like keeping themselves somewhat warm. And oh, you shit. make your way down to the wait. He's been working on the book. Yeah, the boiler ain't working. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Keep going. And you make your way down. Just and panicking. You see, you see the boiler is still completely disassembled. Uh, Cora is in the exact same state as when he left. He has not been back. Um, and, they, and the box? Did they take the box in with them? Yes. Yeah. It mm-hmm. gives a, a faint nice beep like it's, like it's picking up faint ra- radioactive signatures. Um, and his locker has a stronger beat because that's where more of his belongings were and that's where he was m- longer. Is there anything mm-hmm. in his locker that yeah. like might have an address or something on it? Um, like you this. do sc- scurry, ah, going through the locker you do find that there is an address to uh, Issues Brewery and there's some sort of like symbol drawn on the back of a card that has a brewery thing on it. Archibald, can you make me an occult roll? Uh, sure. Cora, you can make one too, but I think you're at like 5%, right? Uh, can I get a reroll? It's up to you. Take it. Right? We got about 35 yeah, minutes left. Like yeah. All right. So when you look at it, you, it's the Knights of Aborus. You know it's some sort of um, mystic organization that keeps rising up and falling every couple decades, really. It's like a group of normal people learn about the supernatural, try to form a group, they fight it, and then for some reason they either all die or something happens, and then their information passes on and someone else finds it, and they sort of redo it. So it's constantly eating its own tail and being reborn over and over again to try to protect normal human people. And that's on the back of the card with the address to the dis- to the brewery. They're to protect or they're... To protect. They're supposedly defenders of humanity. It supposedly has its origins starting way back in Africa, but the name of it's changed so much and it's become known as the Knights of Aborus. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, like, I'll, I'll relay that to Cora. Um, maybe... For um, as good a place as any to check. Yeah, let's, let's, let's check this. All right, so... And, uh, should we run, run back out? Yep. Sprint back to the car. Well, you make your way back to the car. To the door, sprint to the car. <laughs> Do you discuss this with any of your compatriots as you're going towards the brewery? Yes. Yeah. Amoya, that reminds mm-hmm. you of something from a story that you heard maybe 150 years ago. Okay. About some Ethiopian soldier that came over that lived in Old Harlem and mm-hmm. started a group, then it died. And, like, his books and things got lost. But it lines up that maybe Wright found them and tried to restart it after the war. Wright found his books? You're you're guessing. Okay. Do you share any of this with your compatriots? Um, And how, if you do? uh, I'm going to share with my compatriots that I uh, uh, was told an old story by my grandmother. Uh, 
um, about uh, uh, a traveler from Africa uh, and the information about the organization and the books and uh, uh, perhaps, um, uh, right, seems like the, the, dire the direction per to pursue because perhaps, perhaps he stumbled upon these things and that they will be of use to us. And the group of you make your way to the brewery. And you do notice for a brewery that's supposedly disused, in the basement there is a light that sort of give that you can see as you're making your way through. It's you easily you park, you make your way up inside, and you like sort of transverse the maze like way down. And there is a sounds sounds of people talking downstairs and lights. And you're in front of a, a door to the basement. What are you doing? Can you make out any of the details about what they're discussing? Um, everyone make me a listen roll. Archibald, you, myself. You over yes. here? I don't know who she was. She came to the hospital. She told me that Bex had been killed. She said some of the other guys are tossed in the slammer. And I go and investigate Bex's house. I talk to the neighbors, and supposedly his body is all ripped open, and like this unholy thing happens. And there is a massive hole in the side of Bex's apartment building on the eighth floor that there is no way something normal or natural could have done that. And then I go by Moore's house and I see them take the body out and Moore's body looks like it was devastated by something. And you hear there's maybe a group of 10 people inside arguing back and forth. Can we, should we? Car carefully make our way should, towards should them. Yeah, let's introduce ourselves. Oh, should we at least see who's present before perhaps. we introduce ourselves? Like, carefully, perhaps. stealthily, unseen, perhaps. perhaps. Cora should lead this, since <laughs> she has the best relationship with Mr. Wright. Oh, he's in there? Yes, awesome. that's his voice that you recognize. I, I failed my listen check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did too. <laughs> I, uh, I, I knocked then, sure. And okay. it goes completely dead quiet there's a long awkward moment and someone says come in open the door and you sort of push open the door and there's a room of 11 people all with weapons aimed at the door I'm hiding and you recognize no Sam no way <laughs> and he kind of goes everyone lowers their weapons I brought friends. They're, I don't think, okay, one of them might be armed. I don't know. He's not going to do anything stupid, though. Right? You're right. <laughs> uh, there's some weird-ass shit going on. I would really like to know what it is. And they look at you, and you look at them, and no one's saying anything over here for a long, long few beats. And Tell eventually, you what. we'll share if you share. Do you share your entire story? Yeah, more pretty much. Yeah. Is there anything that you leave out, like creature ripping itself out, scuttling up a building? Nope. Um, flying Quinn. Point, nope. Undead servants. Okay. Uh, I might leave out Flying Quinn and Undead Servants yeah, because yeah, they are yeah, not yeah, relevant to the thing that is after them. Um, and Wright tells you that I'm not sure. I saw some things in the war that when I was separated from the rest of the unit, I was in a trench and there were at least a uh, hundred dead that wouldn't die that I had to escape my way through. And that stuck with me. And when I got back, I discovered this old house up in, in North Harlem on in Sugar Hill and these artifacts. And I learned about the Knights of Boris. And I called in some of my, my other buddies that wanted to join up. And I recruited some other people that we've met. And we know there's things out there that man was not meant to know. Well, people weren't meant to know. And we've been trying to do what we can and then you came to me and told me this horrific story. And then I went and I talked to Lance and you told Lance more <laughs> than you told me. And that has led me to call the group together. 
Well, you, you told me you were busy and go away, so... Uh... Do you have the artifacts here? He sort of, like, shows you a sword that he has and a few books, but that's really it. All I know is that Bex continually... After the Battle of Bellawood, Bex always said that our radio equipment never worked the same. He could never figure out why, but he almost became obsessed with it. And... I tried to assure him that it wasn't anything, but it could. We we stopped some sort of ex scientific experiment. I'm not sure what it was. There was a large explosion, and there was just like a a wave of energy or something that hit all of us. And I could have sworn that we passed out for a few minutes, but in the end, we we killed them and we got out, and then we served the rest of the war. But Bex always said, since that one day, radios never worked right around us. He always had problems calling in, like the vehicles would stop sporadically. And then I read that the the two French officers that sort of helped us out, both of them had been, well, one died of natural causes, but I saw like his body had been dug up and the other one was killed in the street. And their bodies match the description of what happened to Moore. Does the Battle of Bellawood mean anything to me? No, nothing at okay. all. It's... <laughs> We read about it in the articles, though, didn't we? Yes. Oh, okay. So we yeah, we came. It came from there. It, it doesn't mean anything supernatural to you. Great. It's an um, incredibly important historical battle. What's the box doing? Going off like crazy next to Sam. Okay. And so, Leora, sorry, one one second, Moya, Leora. From hearing him describe all the bodies, the only body whose brain had been taken or missing is Bex's. Sorry, uh, Amoya, go ahead. Just, I was just going to tell them that, you know, we we also find seem to find ourselves in a position where we are trying to do some good and our uh, concern, uh, whether you believe us or not, is the creature. I believe you. And I've got, he looks over, two squads of people that are ready to stop something, but we don't know where to go. And we can all sit around and be prepared forever, but it won't matter if we don't know how to stop what's happening. Well, we have more manpower, so it might make it easier to locate the van. Van? Um, oh, the van that it got into. The human accomplices. We have a beeping box. Um, yeah, they can see that one, sweetie. I, I kind of <laughs> wish that more was here than if it's about a van. More knows about all sorts of vehicles. He is I kind of the go-to person for the different clubs in Harlem. Hey, um, well, shop I mean, I, I, I know a bit about clubs in Harlem. I, I, I want to go back to that sort of original mythos role. Uh, where I sort of knew about these things for a second. Uh, was there some context where I, like, do we under, do I understand that those creatures, when they sort of, like, use someone as a skin suit, is that person, like, conscious of it at all? Or, I mean, are they, or are they like, just immediately... God. Yeah, you know, like, are they just, like, dead, dead you, right now? Like, is he just dead and, like, you, lying? You don't or know. He... Okay. You don't know that, but what you do know is that... Leora, with her, I remember she made a great role, told you that the brain and everything was extracted after the body was killed. And so you're fairly so, certain those are two separate incidences that occur. Would it be the idea that they could reclaim the knowledge after death? Amoya tells you certainly, yes, that's possible. Maybe so she does that herself. There was something that Bex found that they needed to know. That Bex discovered in the research. If you all remember, whatever Bex was very inquisitive about any information that you would provide, especially mm -hmm. regarding the other Hellfighters. Mm. Mm -hmm. I did not remember that. Okay. Um. So I'm just the the reason I asked that was because I'm just trying to ascertain whether sort of 
um, this is like the creature kind of like lying pretending to be the guy or if it's like there's some kind of like it's just waiting hiding behind him and he thinks he's doing his normal stuff until maybe this beast comes out and you do remember that when the thing was piloting Bex's corpse there was a buzzing sound in the air and Bex had a lot of unusual features that came right. became obvious in the first few minutes. And you've probably been talking to right now 15, 20 minutes. And it's for Cora, it's the exact same as when you talked to him downstairs. Except he's okay. no longer in like a size six suit and he's a size eight person. <laughs> okay. So The best suggestion that I have is to use the numbers to try to find the van, because mm -hmm. you can because you can actually split it, split everybody up, send them to the clubs that Cora suspects, see if you can put eyes on the thing. Um, because that seems to be the most direct link that we have. Uh, I need to use a phone call home and see if we have an address for Rocco Morlini or uh, ask these people if they know anything about Rocco. And we don't have experience. a phone here. We don't have a phone here. Okay. And sorry, sorry, everyone, one second. Uh, oh. Thank you, everyone. We've hit $2,500. That oh, means wow. that within the next 15 minutes, you can be assured I will pull a great old one out to <laughs> share yeah, with everyone. Yay! 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 Wait, 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 why are we cheering? I mean, thank you for the donation. Also, great. Because yay voting and oh goodness. Yes. No, and the great old ones are the best part. That's why you're here. Trust me. That's true. That's true. Thank you all for your generosity. That's so fantastic. That is really amazing. Thank you. Um, so yeah, does what does the group know about Rocco? Ma'am, we don't know anything about him, but if you want... Okay. All right, look at it like this. You're more of a scalpel. We're more of your hammer if you need mm -hmm. us to do something. Okay. So if you point us at something, we can help you do whatever it is you need to do to stop it. But if we don't know where it is... And everybody here, I'm sorry, has, has day jobs, night jobs, and we just can't sure. not go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Sam, after he says this, well, I used to have a day job. You know, if you go back, they could probably really desperate. I mean, it's freezing out there, and the boiler is. I, I, there's a chance. I could use a new stock boy. <laughs> You've never felt anyone stare at you colder than that. <laughs> the stock boy. Hill Hillian okay. takes a step back. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gives you the luck. <laughs> so, if you want. This this is where we this is where we meet. We'll meet again tomorrow. Um, okay. If if you need, I'm happy to ride with you right now. But we got to figure out something, as I don't have anywhere else to go because I don't have a job. Um. Yeah, I mean, I still think we're driving to see if we can make the box. Yeah. Leap. All right. Yes. Yeah. I, I, you I, do I think, know. I think it's a good. Go ahead. No, Go ahead. Uh, you, you can do. You can do. I was just agreeing. You do know that if Sam rides with you, the box is going to go off the whole time. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean with Sam. <laughs> or I assume Sam also has a car, so Sam could take somebody else and check other places while the group with the box is is beeping or not beeping. But it's clear they don't have investigation time this evening. Yes. Um, so, uh, is, does, uh, is there a way to get a hold of any one of them before tomorrow night? Sam gives you the now. number. Sam gives you the number to their friend that's an operator that should be able to get in touch with any of them. That's because right. the thing about the 20s is if you make a call, you're not making a direct call, you're making calls to an operator who then makes right. the call for you. So every call yes. you have, Someone hears what you're discussing. Yes, and they're they're still party, party lines. lines. Yeah. Um. Also, is there a phone here? Can we check on no. the gentleman from? Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. Can we? This is a, a disused brewery. A place that has a phone. Can we check on uh, what's happening to the gentleman 
uh, call the armory and check in. Yes. All right. The five of you load back into Cora's car, and you take one more point of damage as it is freezing cold outside. Oof. Unnaturally cold. The car itself barely starts. It's so cold. I'm from Kinsale. Amoya and Archibald, you know that something's coming. It's close. It's almost here. You're certain you've got less than an hour, maybe two at extreme most, before whatever it is arrives. It's been coming for a while, but now it's the time. If we have a chance to make a quick stop by my uh, grocery, I want to pick something up, if that's all right. Is there a phone at your grocery? Yes. Two birds, Fantastic. one stone. Sounds great. Yes, that's great. Let's go. You stop by the grocery. Killian right. picks up his longings. You call Lance. Correct. It's a it's a a, a, a very uh, very quick run in and out with what looks to be some sort of a violin case. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you call Lance. I think immediately Lily knows what's going on. <laughs> she, she's probably used that tactic. <laughs> <laughs> You get a hold of Lance. He tells you that he's he has two lawyers that have gone down. They've have them legally on the books now, and they're trying to do it the legal way. And he'll he'll do what he can. But they are no longer non-existence people, so they can't just ghost them in the middle of the night. That's the stuff. Nice, nice, good, good. Um, and did he locate Rocco Marlini since we have him on the phone now? He's close to an address. He might have one for an hour or two. Okay. Great. Check back. For some reason, we'll check they, they don't want to give out the address of a white person military to a black military veteran. Well, okay. black military officer. Jock. Mm-hmm. All right. So the group of you are okay. riding around Harlem listening to the beeping of a box. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah, beep, beep, pretty beep, much. Beep, 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 beep. You have one of the first car radios right now. (laughs) (laughs) And as you you pass Club Deluxe and it starts going off, you hear... And when you pass it, it goes... Is that the most consistent sound we've heard from it? Yes. It's been about 45 minutes, so that is the most consistent beeping that you've heard. Well, okay. Let's go. Are you trying to go to the front or going on back? front um when you go up front now it's around nine at night you okay. see there's a, a burly security guard and club deluxe he sort of like says hey folks sorry we're not open for another hour and a half you know come late or don't come at all well that's okay we want the we're hoping the van is here somewhere uh, van no i'm not talking to him i'm talking to my people Right now, there's you're at the front door. You've got security guard. Okay. You've got mm-hmm. the group of you in front of the security guard in the bitter cold. Mm-hmm. And he says, come in like an hour and a half. We're not open yet. And it, you it said, really we're so, looking for the van. It's so cold out here. Can we please come in and wait? Just even in the lobby area. I would normally say no, but it is really cold. So $10 a person, I'll let you in. That's fine. Hey, Absolutely. Okay. And you see he looks shocked as he takes... Who's paying him $50? That's like highway robbery! Yeah. I, yeah, I could is. probably go in, like, cabs. No, it's fine. I'll pay for it. Okay. Amoya pays for all of you. And you're, you're led in the Cotton Club. You're led into the um, Club $10? Deluxe. Club Deluxe. She's still protesting about the $10. Just say. <laughs> it is warmer oh, inside. It's like the, the heater inside is battling against the cold. Which, by the way, when oh. you're outside, you took one more point of damage from the bitter cold. The box is going crazy right now. Is there a way to turn it off? No. So it's just beeping. Fortunately, it's, just... it's not open yet, so a lot of the different people that are working here sort of give you quizzical looks <laughs> as you're walking inside with the beeping box. What is that sound? <laughs> oh, I heard you it see too. That's so an odd. entire group of performers that are practicing stop to stare at all of you. But the box is beeping. Time is short. What are you doing? Um, Follow the box, right? 
So you, you I'm follow it. The box is in like somebody's purse, and we're not just carrying it around. Out, right? Like a satchel. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure okay. that my um, my handgun is in easy reach. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take put the satchel over my shoulder, or no, I'm going to hold the satchel under my stole, under my arm, uh, and uh, uh, get up under the guise of looking for the ladies um, and uh, see what I can see. Okay. See what I find. And so the box, with you doing that, leads you through the Club Deluxe, all the way through the back, through the kitchen, and out back, what you see is a van from the other night and you see the back of someone in looks like a, a cloak almost to keep warm working. And as you if you call for him, you see that he turns to look at the group of you. He looks exactly like that, but he has these unusual almost shell like things attached to the side of his ears that the hood was keeping covered until the wind blows it off. Make me a round of sanity checks. As he turns almost robotically towards you. And you hear a constant low humming sound from something. Mm. Damn! If you made it... Ooh. We don't anyone... fuck around, yo! <laughs> we were prepared for this. We are ice cold. Uh, I mean, like, literally I, cold, but also... Yeah, yeah. 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 All of you are... I, <laughs> That's not at all. Her teeth are chattering too hard for its phases. <laughs> it turns and looks at you and drops what it was carrying for the club and lets out an unholy screech. And something in the van starts to shudder and move, just almost uncontrollably. And the chittering sound gets louder and louder. That violin case is open. Mm. Can, 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 I, can I make a... I, I want to do like a big... Uh, telekinesis person try and like f push the van away or something or like make like, me a hard tele how many how many magic points do you want to spend <sighs> you're guessing that truck is easily we'll say a ton um shaking ten. violently from 10 yeah make me a hard power roll you see archer ball goes oh and Killian's pulling out something from a guitar case. Cora, Amoya, Leora, what are you doing? I am grabbing that handgun. Yeah, I, I've, I've got my hand in my purse, pulling out my handgun. And that Archie Ball amazing. Archie throws is. out, slams oh, nice. the guy through the truck, and sends the truck and him spiraling from side to side. And every time the truck hits, you see that like a panel slams open. And more of it turns, and you see another person is flung from outside of it. And just like this spatter of blood shoots into the air that crystallizes because it's so cold as it does. And as he hits the ground, the last words that you hear from the person shout are, Ithaca! Uh. And his entire body ruptures open and just from like the intestines and blood, almost like a portal erupts out of him. And the group of you see, you should go ahead and make me the sanity roll right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you think? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Up here. And it is massive. And it just grows out of him, taller and taller. And the temperature drops. Everyone loses three hit points automatically from how cold it's getting. Your joints are freezing. Your blood is freezing. Did anyone pass their sanity check? This is a good sanity check to pass, by the way. I did. Cool. Uh, uh, I did if not. you passed it, you lose. Let me roll this d10. You lose four. Okay. Did anyone fail it? Would you like to use your reroll? Normally, I wouldn't let you use it for a sanity roll, but I'll let you use it right now because we're going to last like five minutes or so. Okay. Sure. sure. Hey, that one uh -huh. I succeeded. Oh, wait, I was doing it as far. Oh, wait, no, I'm okay. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, Core, you lose four. Archibald, let me roll this D100 right quick for you, buddy. Oh, 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 That's a 92. Oh, 62. No, no, not 62. 92. 
92. Oh my god. So I mean, Archibald, if you look at it, is there any right... sandy left that you can like buy that off with before I do what I'm about to do? Yeah, we I have mean... um, we have 103 to negate. Look at that, Archibald. Can I cast bliss on someone else? Uh, after this, you could, but not for this, because um... it went. Archibald's awesome. Massive mythos creature shattering everyone's sanity, and you don't have time to cast yet. Archibald, would you no, like no, to burn? I know burn... I can't protect him from what happened. Can I protect him from what you're going to do next? After I've done it, you could. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, like, I, there's I, nothing I, 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 other than your 100 banked sanity points to protect him from what I'm about to do. Okay. That's what I was asking. Archibald. Um, am I the only do? person who failed? Does anybody else need yep. it? No, just you. Just you. Sorry, okay. Archie. Then, uh, yeah, uh, so if I can uh, use some of that. Um, yeah. yeah. How much do you need? How much um, do you need? 92. So, uh, I'm it just need... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So ba basic, basically 92. Uh, and then I'll, I'd still be at 63. I mean, I could go down a little more. No, you bought off with 92. You bought it off. How much spare sanity does that leave you? We have 11 left. Okay. Now, can everyone yeah. make me <laughs> another was, sanity check? Again, the keeper, like, ha, ha, ha. Can yeah. everyone now make me another sanity we've got check? The hands. <laughs> As you see, shaking off part of the van that Archibald tossed to the side, the thing from last night erupts out no. behind oh, it. No, no, no. Another oh, round of sanity no. rolls, please. Another round oh, of sanity rolls. No. Okay. Yes. Did anyone fail? Cora. I, I, I failed. Want to reroll it? Do, do, yeah, do we have more rerolls? Uh, we do. If you made it, you still lose one. Oh my god! And I failed again. We have eleven rerolls left. After All this. right. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm. I'm like three fails in. Like I'm just gonna. I'm just, I'm just gonna accept it. We, we've got like five minutes. Technically, I'm gonna burn yeah. an extra three minutes past where we were. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Did so Did you finally make it after field. burning all of your rerolls? Keep, keep, yeah, uh, reroll. We've got. Okay, rerolls. We still okay, I, I made it on that next one. So nice. you have? Is it five rerolls left? I had eleven, but I could be off. So I, just I think it's spent, five. So that would be ten. A couple. You have five. Okay, yeah, we'll go five. Yeah, five left. All right. All right. The group of you are there. You see this massive, great old one, freezing. The temperature is continuing to drop. You're certain that you're going to freeze to death in two or three rounds. Unless you do something. And behind it, a chittering Mego that's sort of like scurrying up the side of the building. The van, totally destroyed by an awesome display of psychic force. What are you doing? You don't want this place. We're a mess. It's not 2020. All right. Um, it was a mess then, too. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what do you I'll give you a second. I'll give you 30 seconds to tell me your plan. I'm just looking at spells. Uh, um, can we make the van blow up now? <laughs> I'm going to like. In a panic, I I think I'm just like going to like honestly sort of like be almost in this sort of exorcist kind of thing like you know reciting forcefully like the most powerful like poems and stuff that i know like i have like very little pk juice left after that but like i'll be prepared to spend the last of it in like one last like kind of poetic stand against the darkness all right so just to recap for everyone quickly you both, oh. Amoya and Archibald, you know that with Mythos Knowledge, you can try to create any sort of effect you want. You'd have to roll. It'll be hard. But I'll let the two of you work together on that, if you want to. The rest of you, Archibald or Amoya, shout at you that it would be pointless to try to shoot Ithaqua, as it would likely do nothing but draw its attention to you. Yes. But you do see the Migo is scuttering down the building, preparing to attack the group. What do you three uh, want to do? I'm unloading into the Mego. <laughs> Make me a roll killing it. Yora and Cora, what are you doing? Uh, I'm trying to make the van blow up. Make me a roll as you shoot at the van, hoping it'll explode. Leora. 
Um, I take out my father's talit, I put it on, I say the Shekhar and then I take out my handgun and I start shooting at the Nigo. Awesome. Make me a roll. Extreme success against the Migo, it seems. Extreme success? Yes. Oh, I'm going to re-roll that. Uh, Hillian, you will do maximum, minimum weapon damage doubled. Okay, and this is so, the... Basically, whatever die you would roll, you would use each die of that, and that you do that, and then twice that. So if it did one d, like if it does one d ten plus two, you do three doubled to be six. Gotcha. So that'd be six plus twenty as the Tommy gun. So twenty six. Jesus, Leora, what'd you get? I had a, a hard uh, I'm sorry, I had an extreme success uh, on my looter. Same as Killian. If it's like 1d10, it'd be that one, then it'd be double to be two. All right, Cora. I had a hard success with the uh, shotgun. You hit it? Make me a luck roll to see if you can get it to detonate. And you see, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. You see that Leora and Killian gun down the Migo and just like a swath of viscous fluid rain down on the group as Cora shoots, hits, and explodes the van through some miraculous miracle that, while it doesn't hurt Ithaqua, it shifts Ithaqua to the side, which I will grant whatever Amoya and Archibald about to do a plus 20% to this Cthulhu Mythos roll we have to make. But what is your plan? You've got one shot. Your teammates have given you an opportunity to save the day. My no hope, rerolls. This is it. My my hope is that uh, Quinn, sorry, Archibald can use his telekinesis powers, mm -hmm. um, and um, I want to, as a distraction, cast a shriveling and. Um, toss my blessed blade to Killian and the hopes of uh, pushing him back through the gate that he just came through. All right. So we're going to do it, do it. We're going to do like a joint force push kind of thing. Yes. Back I like it. Is, yes. All right. So it's going to work mechanically like this. Um, Amoya, you're going to get to roll. So you got 20 okay. plus 20 percent to whatever Cthulhu Mythos is based on the work that Cora did exploding it. Archibald, okay. for every magic point you dedicate, I'm going to give her an extra 5% to this roll. Okay, I have six I have six left, so I'm going to like do this and basically pass out. All right, you doing all six? All right, so, so I'm, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm going to give all six. All right, you've got an equivalent plus 50 to your Cthulhu Mythos. What's your Cthulhu Mythos? Amoya? Oh, I'm sorry, a 15. So you've got a 65% chance of grabbing Ithaqua and shoving it back through the portal to close it that it just came out of before it gets to move. Okay. So roll the, do the mythos roll? Yep. <gasps> what did you get? 80, oh, sorry, 89 out of 15. Technically it's 65. So... As you yes. reach out and you grab it and you pull, Ithaqua does not go. Mm -hmm. Instead, it does like this. And just a wave of cold ripples out. Mm -hmm. Archibald passes out. Mm -hmm. Everyone takes... Pff, one point of freezing damage as your DM rolls very low. Take it. Next round, Ithaqua is actually starting to move. It's starting to step away from the portal now. What are you doing? You're guessing this is probably your last round of action before it freezes all of New York, well, all of Harlem, then all of New York, and possibly the world. Killian has my blessed blade, which I'm not entirely positive works against this creature, but it's what I have. Uh, so and I can, I can cast... You know that a normal spell will not do anything of note versus... And that, and that was my question. I, I did not assume that it 
that it would. Or at least it was a creative use of trying to push it back through the portal is your best bet. Yes. You know that the that explosion knocked it to the side. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm I'm passed out. Oh. Archibald is. I gave my I gave my last bit of juice for that. Seeing like passed out. Um. Oh, and I mean, by, the, by the way, sorry, Amoya, that effort did cost you three points of, three magic points. Okay. All right, this is it. What are you doing? Okay. Group? Uh, I think that perhaps... Oh, 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 we have donations to get points back. What? We did. <laughs> we did. What? <laughs> Curses! <laughs> what points do we get back? For this, my um, generosity astounds me. I will allow, if you all want, you should have technically gotten a D6 hit points or Sandy points. I will let each of you donate a D6 to roll for Archibald to get him magic points. And then he and Absolutely. Leora could try the same thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, easy. <laughs> done so and done. I, let me I, roll I, five I, to six. I, I love how we, we, this is like actually sort of like turning into a little bit of like a spirit bomb. <laughs> right? All right. Well, I got two, your energy. Two. Five D6. I rolled them all at once. You get oh, okay. Archibald. You have 15 oh, magic sorry. points. You almost pass out. You slam against the wall, nearly drained. And your companions say, Get up! We need you! Okay, you get up. Uh, and. Um, so, the same thing for every magic point you spend, I'll give Leora 5%. But you no longer have your plus 20 because Ithaca is no longer off balance. Mm, okay. Okay. That's not helpful. Um, I mean, I guess I'm not I, here to help. I mean, I guess, I guess there's nothing. Uh, this is it, right? So it's just like I just, you know, I stand up and then I give. I thought I gave everything before, but I'm gonna actually give it now. All right. Well, I'm hoping the rest of us give magic points too. Yeah, I'm hoping the combination of Killian coming at him with blade and the um, psychic force from Archibald uh, will will help kick him off balance enough that perhaps we can actually physically move him towards the push him back to into the gate with killing okay. him with the blade could i use that to like propel killian like before i was just trying to do it myself but maybe like him in the yeah, like, yeah sort of you could push. as, as yeah. he's clutching yeah, the blessed I mean, I mean, blade i don't know yeah yeah he's We're looking at his toss. hand he kind of like grasps his fingers together and goes Hide the shining of your face from me, yet if I may hold your hand in darkness, it is enough, since I know that if I stumble, I do not fall. And just goes into a full football tackle run with the blade in front, just screaming towards this yeah. entity. And I think I think right before at the start of it, like right as he gets to ready to run, I come up behind like I get up and I come behind him and like sort of like my hands are like glowing a bit and like I touch him to the back and then like propel him. All right, so for every five magic points that Archibald spends, you get that to your roll, uh, Ariel. And okay, so I'm going to spend an awesome, awesome spend it all. Sacri Fifteen. potential sacrifice himself. I gave you another plus ten because I like it. Can I spend my magic points? You're spending yours just to do it. You get no okay, additional bonus. It. Okay, okay, very good. How many okay. points Can are you spending, spend Archibald? Magic points? Uh, Fifteen. No, nope. I got spent all fifteen. I got. All right, so that's seventy-five plus mm -hmm. ten because I like what you're doing, uh, mm -hmm. and you have a fifteen Cthulhu Mythos. I do. You technically have a 100% chance, but it's Cthulhu, so it's going to be 99. All right. Oh, block. <laughs> and our <laughs> and Archibald falls to the ground, passing out. I got 82. It is technically successful, but you lose this many magic points first. Ah, oh, you lose one magic point. I have a low roller. Oh. And you see that kill that oh. you slam Ithaca back through the portal, not harming Ithaca, but pulling it back through. And Killian slams into the body the portal is coming from, nearly cutting it in half with the enchanted blade, severing the portal. It, it, Ithaca's so gone. It itself. Ithaca's gone. The body's destroyed. <gasps> the portal's gone. The me goes in bits and pieces. You technically I... have lawyers trying to defend the Hellfighters. 
And Cthulhu, this is as close as you'll ever come to a win. No kidding. Enjoy this moment. I'll take oh it. Archibald God. can't because he's unconscious. Yeah, I mean. I run over and start tending to Archibald. Yeah. Come on, wake up. Re rest is a sort oh. of enjoyment. I yeah. have goosebumps and I can barely breathe. Oh, my God. Um, so, sorry, everyone. We ran maybe 10, 15 minutes over. But that is the game. Oh. Thank I you for all of your wonderful you donations. Oh, no. Cut out. What? The people didn't get to see the end? What? No, oh, no they did. No! no. Oh. What? Oh, my God. Oh, no. oh, no. I hate you, oh, Internet. No. <laughs> oh, no. See, this is what happens when you fuck with a Thakwa. Baron Lee. Well, on the plus part, we were recording, and it should be on YouTube. So maybe we'll upload the, the final version. Twitch. I don't know. Uh, can someone? We slammed so hard that we broke the internet. We slammed the internet. Can someone write to them and say, "Hey, we don't know what happened, but you missed the awesome conclusion." I uh, know. Uh, no. So. Ever. I want to so say thank good. you everyone for playing. Um, as you can tell, I need to hire a tech person. <laughs> so if there are any recommendations, let me go. Oh my god. Oh, so good. Uh, oh, that was so fantastic. Oh, yes, for wow. posterity, as we should be able, as we're recording it, we can at least put it on YouTube later. Oh, that sucks! I know. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, what a what a cliffhanger for those who are watching it live. Right? <laughs> They're like, no, wait, what? Oh, oh that's amazing. <laughs> this is your Sunday matinee cliffhanger. Exactly. What happened? So Alrighty. Good. Do we know exactly when it cut out? <laughs> no. All right. So yeah, it's it was before right. people knew the answer. Yeah. Perfect. It was right, right as the climactic moment happened. You yeah. can't ask for that kind of That's tension, y'all. That is, that is perfect. Yeah. That's that was awesome. so good. <laughs> Freaking awesome. All right. Oh, so congratulations, wow. Chris. You found Holy a new crap. way. Let's 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 do the thing. Holy crap! What? Sorry, I just looked for the first time in a long time. Oh wow! Oh wow! Thank you, everyone. Um. You all are fantastic. Uh, wow. uh, I agree, Tanya. So Twitch cannot handle our awesome epicness. Yes. <laughs> well, all right. Then, Twitch. As it is technically a holiday for us in like 15, 20 minutes. Um, let's do let's do the wrap up, I guess. So thank okay. you for all your wonderful donations. Um, vote riders getting all that money, and you hopefully you're helping more people get out to vote to take our country back. And I want my amazing cast of people that dealt with so many technical issues for our, <laughs> our first and second time to come out to tell you something about themselves. And we'll go in reverse order this time because it's more fun. Uh, Quinn, where, hey. can, where can people meet you? What do they need to know about you? And where can they buy your awesome work? Okay. Um, so Quinn Murphy. Um, uh, I spend uh, a lot of my sort of online time like uh, on Twitter. Um, ranting about game design often uh, under QH underscore Murphy. Um, I have uh, only one Paizo theme out right now, but there will be more soon. Um, and uh, I have a game, uh, 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 hip hop RPG called Five Fires. Uh, and uh, I, should, I should prepare the link or something like that, but... Um, and uh, a thing you should know about me is, like, I kind of don't know how to use Twitter. Um, so I, like, go on, like, I, like, I will have, like, 20-page long rants. But I, I think people find them interesting. So that's the other thing you should know. Um, and, then, and that's me. All right. Uh, Misha, same thing. Uh, hi, I'm Misha B. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, BG Gameworks. It stands for Black Girl Gameworks, which happens to be my webpage. Yay. Um, yeah, uh, you can also find uh, us uh, 
the more seats at the table uh, newsletter is more seats RPG uh, on Twitter. Uh, and from there, the, there's a couple of pinned tweets that you can find a link to where you can sign up for the newsletter and so that you too can get delivered to your inbox by weekly fabulous games uh, or links to fabulous games that you can buy by people of marginalized gender identities. Thank you. And Matthew, I don't think anyone knows where to find you, but please go ahead. <laughs> Who? That guy? Uh, Never heard of him. Uh, <laughs> name is Matthew Mercer. I, uh, Ninja Master for Critical Role, uh, as well as a voice actor. And uh, if you want to find me, you can find me on Twitter at Matthew Mercer or Instagram at Matthew Mercer BO. We just launched uh, our officially our charity foundation, Critical Role Foundation, a few years in the making. Uh, and our first major campaign is supporting First Nations, which helps uh, develop uh, cultural programs for indigenous uh, people of America. Um, so you can check that out at criticalrolefoundation.org. Thank you so much. Uh, Ariel. Uh, I am Ariel <laughs> Celeste. Uh, I can be found at Ariel Contessa, but not really because I never use Twitter because I'm terrible. <laughs> um, uh, you can find my work in the newly released second edition of Harlem Unbound, which is both fantastic and brilliant and beautiful. Um, and very little of that has to do with me and almost all of it has to do with Chris Spivey. Um, <laughs> it was a and, team effort. Uh, on Saturday, October 3rd, I will be running a Fall of Delta Green campaign online for the Ooh. HP Lovecraft Film Festival in which I will get to kill the likes of um, Ken Heights and Adam Scott Glancy and uh, a man who, and I don't know who the other people are. So uh, someone from the uh, Lovecraft Historical Society and um, I believe his name is Alan who is in charge of the film festival. They're going to die in incredibly, amazingly spectacular ways <laughs> as decided and informed by audience participation. Uh, so it's Saturday at 5.30 Pacific time uh, please come watch, laugh, make fun of them, encourage their painful <laughs> deaths. Uh, it should be a, a fun, quick, it's like 90 minutes. So gonna <laughs> hit them all hard in and out. It'll be fantastic. Uh, come support. You can still get tickets to the film festival uh, online through their website if you are domestic. And thank you all so much. This was an absolute joy. Um, and my fellow players were tremendous. I couldn't have asked for better. And Jennifer. Hey, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter as at DreamWisp. You can find me on Twitch as DreamWisp Jen. Um, I am a writer, producer, uh, performer, streamer, all the things. Um, I do a lot of disability advocacy. I just put out the accessibility and tabletop uh, resource uh, document, which you can find as my pin tweet on Twitter. Um, and this was just such a thrill. Um, I, I please support the work of these people. Like this, this game is so phenomenal and i'm so overjoyed to have gotten to play with all of you um thank you so much and it's so amazing um to have have gotten to raise money for these incredible um causes as well so thank you chris so much yeah. for, for huge Huge round of applause for chris spivey the incredible yes. call through the keeper of arcane lore and the yes. The creator of Harlem Unbound. Thank you so much yes. for having us and for running this event and helming it and putting this together. You're fantastic. And uh, being brave, uh, being brave yeah. enough to yeah. run it for, and like, do the tech. up with us. And, uh, and all the technical issues. Yeah. And, oh, and running no all the behind the scenes Great stuff. <laughs> so let, let me say, I guess I'll finish with, thank you everyone for playing. I appreciate each and every one of you for stepping up and trying this new venture with me, supporting Harlem Unbound, supporting every single person on this call, these incredible causes, and being generally great human beings. Um, and I will finish, I guess, with a, a pitch for myself, is that regardless yes. of the constant technical issues, starting next month, we're going to run our first online session of Haunted West, which is my next mm -hmm. game, which shines a spotlight on all the forgotten voices of the Old West. And I hope that you'll come back, watch me drop technical issues left and right. <laughs> and maybe if I can eventually twist some other people's arms, maybe a few of these folks will come back for a surprise guest appearance every so often. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night. Such a pleasure.